In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment. It is you we worship, and upon you we call for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, not of those against whom there is anger, nor of those who are misguided. Lam, mean. This is the book in which there is no doubt a guide for the righteous, those who believe in the unseen and perform the prayers and give from what we have provided for them, and those who believe in what was revealed to you and in what was revealed before you and are certain of the hereafter. These are upon guidance from their Lord. These are the successful. As for those who disbelieve, it is the same for them. Whether you have warned them or have not warned them, they do not believe. God has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing, and over their vision is a veil. They will have a severe torment. Among the people are those who say, we believe in God and in the last day, but they are not believers. They seek to deceive God and those who believe, but they deceive none but themselves, though they are not aware. In their hearts is sickness, and God has increased their sickness. They will have a painful punishment because of their denial. And when it is said to them, do not make trouble on earth, they say, we are only reformers. In fact, they are the troublemakers, but they are not aware. And when it is said to them, believe as the people have believed, they say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? In fact, it is they who are the fools, but they do not know. And when they come across those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We were only ridiculing. It is God who ridicules them and leaves them bewildered in their transgression. Those are they who have bartered error for guidance, but their trade does not profit them, and they are not guided. Their likeness is that of a person who kindled a fire. When it illuminated all around him, God took away their light and left them in darkness, unable to see. Deaf, dumb, blind, they will not return. Or like a cloudburst from the sky, in which is darkness and thunder and lightning, they press their fingers into their ears from the thunderbolts in fear of death. But God surrounds the disbelievers. The lightning almost snatches their sight away. Whenever it illuminates for them, they walk in it. But when it grows dark over them, they stand still. Had God willed, he could have taken away their hearing and their sight. God is capable of everything. O oh people, worship your Lord, who created you and those before you, that you may attain piety. He who made the earth a habitat for you, and the sky a structure, and sends water down from the sky, and brings out fruits thereby as a sustenance for you. Therefore, do not assign rivals to God while you know. And if you are in doubt about what we have revealed to our servant, then produce a chapter like these and call your witnesses apart from God, if you are truthful. But if you do not and you will not, then beware the fire whose fuel is people and stones, prepared for the disbelievers, and give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will have gardens beneath which rivers flow. Whenever they are provided with fruit, Therefrom, as sustenance, they will say, This is what we were provided with before, and they will be given the like of it, and they will have pure spouses therein, and they will abide therein forever. God does not shy away from making an example of a gnat or something above it. As for those who believe, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say, what did God intend by this example? He leads astray many thereby, and he guides many thereby, but he misleads thereby only the evildoers, those who violate God's covenant after its confirmation and sever what God has commanded to be joined and commit evil on earth. These are the losers. 
How can you deny God? When you were dead and he gave you life, then he will put you to death, then he will bring you to life, then to him you will be returned. It is he who created for you everything on earth, then turned to the heaven and made them seven heavens, and he is aware of all things. When your Lord said to the angels, I am placing a successor on earth, they said, Will you place in it someone who will cause corruption in it and shed blood, while we declare your praises and sanctify you? He said, I know what you do not know. And he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he presented them to the angels and said, Tell me the names of these, if you are sincere. They said, Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. It is you who are the knowledgeable, the wise. He said, O oh Adam, tell them their names. And when he told them their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth, and that I know what you reveal and what you conceal? And we said to the angels, Bow down to Adam. They bowed down, except for Satan. He refused, was arrogant, and was one of the disbelievers. We said, O oh Adam, inhabit the garden, you and your spouse and eat from it freely, as you please. But do not approach this tree, lest you become wrongdoers. But Satan caused them to slip from it, and caused them to depart the state they were in. We said, go down, some of you enemies of one another, and you will have residence on earth and enjoyment for a while. Then Adam received words from his Lord, so he relented towards him, he is the relenting, the merciful. We said, go, go down from it, all of you. Yet whenever guidance comes to you from me, then whoever follows my guidance, they have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. But as for those who disbelieve and reject our signs, these are the inmates of the fire, wherein they will remain forever. O children of Israel, remember my blessings which I bestowed upon you, and fulfill your pledge to me, and I will fulfill my pledge to you, and fear me, and believe in what I revealed, confirming what is with you, and do not be the first to deny it, and do not exchange my revelations for a small price, and be conscious of me. And do not mix truth with falsehood, and do not conceal the truth while you know. And attend to your prayers, and practice regular charity, and kneel with those who kneel. Do you command people to virtuous conduct, and forget yourselves, even though you read the scripture? Do you not understand, and seek help through patience and prayer? But it is difficult, except for the devout, those who know that they will meet their Lord, and that to Him they will return. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you, and that I favored you over all nations. And beware of a day when no soul will avail another in the least, nor will any intercession be accepted on its behalf, nor will any ransom be taken from it, nor will they be helped. And recall that we delivered you from the people of Pharaoh. They inflicted on you terrible persecution, killing your sons and sparing your women. Therein was a tremendous trial from your Lord. And recall that we parted the sea for you, so we saved you, and we drowned the people of Pharaoh as you looked on. And recall that we appointed for Moses forty nights, then you took to worshipping the calf after him, and you turned wicked. Then we pardoned you after that, so that you might be grateful. And recall that we gave Moses the scripture and the criterion, so that you may be guided. And recall that Moses said to his people, O oh my people, you have done wrong to yourselves by worshipping the calf. So repent to your maker and kill your egos. That would be better for you with your maker. So he turned to you in repentance. 
He is the acceptor of repentance, the merciful. And recall that you said, O oh Moses, we will not believe in you unless we see God plainly. Thereupon, the thunderbolt struck you as you looked on. Then we revived you after your death, so that you may be appreciative. And we shaded you with clouds, and we sent down to you manna and quails. Eat of the good things we have provided for you. They did not wrong us, but they used to wrong their own souls. And recall that we said, enter this town and eat plentifully from it whatever you wish, but enter the gate humbly and say, pardon, we will forgive your sins and give increase to the virtuous. But the wrongdoers among them substituted words other than those given to them. So we sent down on the wrongdoers a plague from heaven because of their wicked behavior. And recall when Moses prayed for water for his people, we said, strike the rock with your staff. Thereupon, 12 springs gushed out from it and each tribe recognized its drinking place. Eat and drink from God's provision and do not corrupt the earth with disobedience. Recall when he said, Oi, oh, Moses, we cannot endure one kind of food. So call to your Lord to produce for us of what the earth grows, of its herbs and its cucumbers and its garlic and its lentils and its onions. He said, would you substitute worse for better? Go down to Egypt where you will have what you asked for. They were struck with humiliation and poverty and incurred wrath from God. That was because they rejected God's revelations and wrongfully killed the prophets. That was because they disobeyed and transgressed. Those who believe and those who are Jewish and the Christians and the Sabaeans, any who believe in God and the last day and act righteously will have their reward with their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. And recall when we received a pledge from you and raised the mount above you. Take what we have given you earnestly and remember what is in it, that you may attain righteousness. But after that, you turned away. Were it not for God's grace and mercy towards you, you would have been among the losers. And you surely knew those of you who violated the Sabbath. We said to them, be despicable apes. Thus we made it a deterrent for their generation and for subsequent generations and a lesson for the right use. And recall when Moses said to his people, God commands you to sacrifice a heifer. They said, do you make a mockery of us? He said, God forbid that I should be so ignorant. They said, call upon your Lord to show us which one. He said, he says she is a heifer neither too old nor too young, but in between, so do what you are commanded. They said, call upon your Lord to show us what her color is. He said, he says she is a yellow heifer, bright in color, pleasing to the beholders. They said, call upon your Lord to show us which one the heifers look alike to us and God willing, we will be guided. He said, he says she is a heifer, neither yoked to plow the earth, nor to irrigate the field, sound without blemish. They said, now you have brought the truth. So they slew her, though they almost did not. And recall when you killed a person and disputed in the matter, but God was to expose what you were hiding. We said, strike him with part of it. Thus, God brings the dead to life and he shows you his signs that you may understand. Then after that, your hearts hardened. They were as rocks or even harder, for there are some rocks from which rivers gush out and others that splinter and water comes out from them and others that sink in awe of God. God is not unaware of what you do. Do you hope that they will believe in you when some of them used to hear the word of God and then deliberately distort it? even after understanding it. And when they come across those who believe, they say, we believe, 
but when they come together privately, they say, well, will you inform them of what God has disclosed to you so that they might dispute with you concerning it before your Lord? Do you not understand? Do they not know that God knows what they conceal and what they reveal? And among them are uneducated who know the scripture only through hearsay, and they only speculate. So woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands and then say, this is from God, that they may exchange it for a little price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn. And they say, the fire will not touch us except for a number of days. Say, have you received a promise from God? God never breaks his promise. Or are you saying about God what you do not know? Indeed, whoever commits misdeeds and becomes besieged by his iniquities, these are the inmates of the fire, wherein they will dwell forever. As for those who believe and do righteous deeds, these are the inhabitants of paradise, wherein they will dwell forever. We made a covenant with the children of Israel, worship none but God, and be good to parents and relatives and orphans and the needy and speak nicely to people and pray regularly and give alms. Then you turned away, except for a few of you, recanting, and we made a covenant with you. You shall not shed the blood of your own, nor shall you evict your own from your homes. You agreed and were all witnesses, but here you are, killing your own and expelling a group of your own from their homes, conspiring against them in wrongdoing and hostility. And if they come to you as captives, you ransom them, although it was forbidden to you. Is it that you believe in part of the scripture and disbelieve in part? What is the reward for those among you who do that but humiliation in this life? And on the day of resurrection, they will be assigned to the most severe torment. God is not unaware of what you do. Those are they who bought the present life for the hereafter, so the punishment will not be lightened for them, nor will they be helped. We gave Moses the scripture and sent a succession of messengers after him, and we gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clear proofs, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. Is it that whenever a messenger comes to you with anything your souls do not desire, you grew arrogant, calling some impostors and killing others. And they said, our hearts are sealed, for the God has cursed them for their ingratitude. They have little faith. And when a scripture came to them from God, confirming what they have, although previously they were seeking victory against those who disbelieved, but when there came to them what they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So God's curse is upon the disbelievers. Miserable is what they sold their souls for, rejecting what God has revealed, out of resentment that God would send down his grace upon whomever he chooses from among his servants. Thus they incurred wrath upon wrath, and there's a demeaning punishment for the disbelievers. And when it is said to them, believe in what God has revealed. They say, we believe in what was revealed to us, and they reject anything beyond that, although it is the truth which confirms what they have. Say, why did you kill God's prophets before if you were believers? Moses came to you with clear proofs, yet you adopted the calf in his absence, and you were in the wrong. And we made a covenant with you and raised the mount above you. Take what we have given you firmly and listen. They said, we hear and disobey. And their hearts became filled with the love of the calf because of their disbelief. Say, wretched is what your faith commands you to do if you are believers. Say, if the final home with God is yours alone, to the exclusion of all other people, then wish for death if you are sincere. But they will never wish for it because of what their hands have forwarded. God is aware of the evildoers. You will find them of all mankind the most eager for life, even more than the polytheists. 
Every one of them wishes he could live a thousand years, but to be granted a long life will not nudge him from the punishment. God is seeing of what they do. Say, whoever is hostile to Gabriel, it is he who revealed it to your heart by God's leave, confirming what preceded it, and guidance and good news for the believers. Whoever is hostile to God and his angels and his messengers and Gabriel and Michael, God is hostile to the faithless. We have revealed to you clear signs and none rejects them except the sinners. Is it not that whenever they make a covenant, some of them toss it aside? In fact, most of them do not believe. And when there came to them a messenger from God, confirming what they had, a faction of those who were given the book threw the book of God behind their backs, as if they do not know. And they followed what the devils taught during the reign of Solomon. It was not Solomon who disbelieved, but it was the devils who disbelieved. They taught the people witchcraft and what was revealed in Babylon to the two angels, Harut and Marut. They did not teach anybody until they had said, we are a test, so do not lose faith. But they learned from them the means to cause separation between man and his wife. But they cannot harm anyone except with God's permission and they learned what would harm them and not benefit them. Yet they knew that whoever deals in it will have no share in the hereafter. Miserable is what they sold their souls for, if they only knew. Had they believed and been righteous, the reward from God would have been better, if they only knew. O oh, you who believe, do not say ambiguous words, but say words of respect and listen. The disbelievers will have a painful torment. It is never the wish of the disbelievers from among the people of the book, nor of the polytheists, that any good should be sent down to you from your Lord. But God chooses for his mercy whomever he wills. God is possessor of sublime grace. We never nullify a verse nor cause it to be forgotten unless we bring one better than it or similar to it. Do you not know that God is capable of all things? Do you not know that to God belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth, and that apart from God you have no guardian or helper? Or do you want to question your messenger, as Moses was questioned before? Whoever exchanges faith for disbelief has strayed from the right path. Many of the people of the book wish to turn you back into unbelievers after you have believed out of envy on their part, after the truth has become clear to them. But pardon and overlook until God brings his command. God has power over all things. And perform the prayer and give alms. Whatever good you forward for yourselves, you will find it with God. God is seeing of everything you do. When they say, none will enter heaven unless he is a Jew or a Christian. These are their wishes. Say, produce your proof if you are truthful. In fact, whoever submits himself to God and is a doer of good will have his reward with his Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. The Jews say the Christians are not based on anything, and the Christians say the Jews are not based on anything. Yet they both read the scripture. Similarly, the ignorant said the same thing. God will judge between them on the day of resurrection regarding their differences. Who is more unjust than him who forbids the remembrance of God's name in places of worship and contributes to their ruin? These ought not to enter them except in fear. For them is disgrace in this world, and for them is a terrible punishment in the hereafter. To God belong the East and the West. Whichever way you turn, there is God's presence. God is omnipresent and omniscient. And they say God has begotten a son. Be he glorified. Rather, his is everything in the heavens and the earth. All are obedient to him, originator of the heavens and the earth. Whenever he decrees a thing, he says to it, 
B, and it becomes. Those who do not know say, if only God would speak to us, or a sign would come to us. Thus said those who were before them, their hearts are alike. We have made the signs clear for people who are certain. We have sent you with the truth, bringing good news and giving warnings. You will not be questioned about the inmates of hell. The Jews and the Christians will not approve of you unless you follow their creed. Say, God's guidance is the guidance. Should you follow their desires after the knowledge that has come to you, you will have in God neither guardian nor helper. Those to whom we have given the scripture follow it as it ought to be followed. These believe in it, but as for those who reject it, these are the losers. O children of Israel, remember my blessing which I bestowed upon you, and that I have favored you over all people. And beware of a day when no soul will avail another soul in any way, and no ransom will be accepted from it, and no intercession will benefit it, and they will not be helped. And when his Lord tested Abraham with certain words and he fulfilled them, he said, I am making you a leader of humanity. He said, and my descendants. He said, my pledge does not include the wrongdoers. And we made the house a focal point for the people and a sanctuary. Use the shrine of Araham as a place of prayer. And we commissioned Abraham and Ishmael, sanctify my house for those who circle around it and those who seclude themselves in it, and those who kneel and prostrate. When Abraham said, O oh my Lord, make this a peaceful land, and provide its people with fruits, whoever of them believes in God and the last day. He said, And whoever disbelieves, I will give him a little enjoyment, then I will consign him to the punishment of the fire. How miserable the destiny! As Abraham raises the foundations of the house, together with Ishmael, our Lord, accept it from us. You are the hearer, the knower, our Lord, and make us submissive to you, and from our descendants a community submissive to you, and show us our rights, and accept our repentance. You are the acceptor of repentance, the merciful our Lord, and raise up among them a messenger of themselves who will recite to them your revelations and teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. You are the Almighty, the wise, who would forsake the religion of Abraham except he who fools himself. We chose him in this world, and in the hereafter he will be among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit, he said, I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. And Abraham exhorted his sons and Jacob, O oh, my sons, God has chosen this religion for you, so do not die unless you have submitted. Or were you witnesses when death approached Jacob and he said to his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We will worship your God and the God of your fathers, Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, one God, and to him we submit. That was a community that has passed, for them is what they have earned, and for you is what you have earned, and you will not be questioned about what they used to do. And they say, be Jews or Christians, and you will be guided. Say, rather, the religion of Abraham, the monotheist, he was not an idolater. Say, we believe in God and in what was revealed to us and in what was revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the patriarchs and in what was given to Moses and Jesus and in what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and to him we surrender. If they believe in the same as you have believed in, then they have been guided. But if they turn away, then they are in schism. God will protect you against them, for he is the hearer, the knower. God's coloring, and who gives better coloring than God? And we are devoted to him. 
Say, do you argue with us about God when he is our Lord and your Lord, and we have our works, and you have your works, and we are sincere to him? Or do you say that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the patriarchs were Jews or Christians? Say, do you know better, or God? And who does greater wrong than he who conceals a testimony he has from God? God is not unaware of what you do. That was a community that has passed. To them is what they have earned, and to you is what you have earned. And you will not be questioned about what they used to do. The ignorant among the people will say, what has turned them away from the direction of prayer they once followed? Say, to God belong the East and the West. He guides whom he wills to a straight path. Thus we made you a moderate community, that you may be witnesses to humanity, and that the messenger may be a witness to you. We only establish the direction of prayer which you once followed, that we may distinguish those who follow the messenger from those who turn on their heels. It is indeed difficult, except for those whom God has guided. But God would never let your faith go to waste. God is kind towards the people, merciful. We have seen your face turned towards the heaven, so we will turn you towards a direction that will satisfy you. So turn your face towards the sacred mosque, and wherever you may be, turn your faces towards it. Those who were given the book know that it is the truth from their Lord, and God is not unaware of what they do. Even if you were to bring to those who were given the book every proof, they would not follow your direction, nor are you to follow their direction, nor do they follow the direction of one another. And if you were to follow their desires after the knowledge that has come to you, you would be, in that case, one of the wrongdoers. Those to whom we have given the book recognize it as they recognize their own children, but some of them conceal the truth while they know. The truth is from your Lord, so do not be a skeptic. To every community is a direction towards which it turns. Therefore, race towards goodness. Wherever you may be, God will bring you all together. God is capable of everything. And wherever you come from, turn your face towards the sacred mosque. This is the truth from your Lord, and God is not heedless of what you do. And wherever you come from, turn your face towards the sacred mosque. And wherever you may be, turn your faces towards it, so that the people may not have any argument against you, except those who do wrong among them. So do not fear them, but fear me, that I may complete my blessings upon you, and that you may be guided. Just as we sent to you a messenger from among you, who recites our revelations to you, and purifies you, and teaches you the book and wisdom, and teaches you what you did not know. So remember me, and I will remember you, and thank me, and do not be ungrateful. O oh, you who believe, seek help through patience and prayers. God is with the steadfast. And do not say of those who are killed in the cause of God, dead. Rather, they are alive. But you do not perceive. We will certainly test you with some fear and hunger, and some loss of possessions and lives and crops. But give good news to the steadfast, those who, when a calamity afflicts them, say, to God we belong, and to him we will return. Upon these are blessings and mercy from their Lord. These are the guided ones. Safar and Marwa are among the rites of God. Whoever makes the pilgrimage to the house or performs the Umrah commits no error by circulating between them. Whoever volunteers good, God is appreciative and cognizant. Those who suppress the proofs and the guidance we have revealed after we have clarified them to humanity in the scripture, those God curses them and the curses curse them, except those who repent and reform and proclaim. Those, I will accept their repentance. I am the acceptor of repentance, the merciful. But as for those who reject faith and die rejecting, those upon them is the curse of God. 
and of the angels, and of all humanity. They will remain under it forever, and the torment will not be lightened for them, and they will not be reprieved. Your God is one God. There is no God but He, the benevolent, the compassionate. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of night and day, in the ships that sail the oceans for the benefit of mankind, in the water that God sends down from the sky and revives the earth with it after it had died and scatters in it all kinds of creatures, in the changing of the winds and the clouds disposed between the sky and the earth, are signs for people who understand. Yet among the people are those who take other than God as equals to Him. They love them as the love of God. But those who believe have greater love for God. If only the wrongdoers would realize when they see the torment that all power is God's and that God is severe in punishment. Those who were followed will then disown those who followed them and they will see the retribution and ties between them will be severed. Those who followed will say, if only we can have another chance, we will disown them as they disowned us. Thus, God will show them their deeds as regrets to them and they will not come out of the fire. O oh, people, eat of what is lawful and good on earth and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. He is to you an open enemy. He commands you to do evil and vice and to say about God what you do not know. And when it said to them, follow what God has revealed, they say, we will follow what we found our ancestors following. Even if their ancestors understood nothing and were not guided, the parable of those who disbelieve is that of someone who calls upon someone who hears nothing except screaming and yelling. Deaf, dumb and blind, they do not understand. O oh, you who believe, eat of the good things we have provided for you and give thanks to God if it is Him that you serve. He has forbidden you carrion and blood and the flesh of swine and what was dedicated to other than God. But if anyone is compelled, without desiring or exceeding, he commits no sin. God is forgiving and merciful. Those who conceal what God revealed in the book and exchange it for a small price, those swallow nothing but fire into their bellies. And God will not speak to them on the day of resurrection, nor will he purify them, and they will have a painful punishment. It is they who exchange guidance for error and forgiveness for punishment. But why do they insist on the fire? That is because God has revealed the book in truth, and those who differ about the book are in deep discord. Righteousness does not consist of turning your faces towards the east and the west, but righteous is he who believes in God, and the last day, and the angels, and the scripture, and the prophets, who gives money, though dear, to near relatives, and orphans, and the needy, and the homeless, and the beggars, and for the freeing of slaves, those who perform the prayers and pay the obligatory charity and fulfill their promise when they promise and patiently persevere in the face of persecution, hardship and in the time of conflict. These are the sincere. These are the pious. O oh, you who believe, retaliation for the murdered is ordained upon you, the free for the free, the slave for the slave, the female for the female. But if he is forgiven by his kin, then grant any reasonable demand and pay with goodwill. This is a concession from your Lord and a mercy. But whoever commits aggression after that, a painful torment awaits him. There is life for you in retaliation, O oh, people of understanding so that you may refrain. It is decreed for you when death approaches one of you and he leaves wealth to make a testament in favor of the parents and the relatives fairly and correctly, a duty upon the righteous. But whoever changes it after he has heard it, the guilt is upon those who change it. God is all hearing, all knowing. 
Should someone suspect bias or injustice on the part of a testator and then reconciles between them, he commits no sin. God is forgiving and merciful. O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may become righteous for a specified number of days. But whoever among you is sick or on a journey than a number of other days. For those who are ugly, a ransom of feeding a needy person. But Hoover volunteers goodness, it is better for him. But to fast is best for you, if you only knew. Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. Guidance for humanity and clear portents of guidance and the criterion. Whoever of you witnesses the month shall fast it. But whoever is sick or on a journey, then a number of other days. God desires ease for you and does not desire hardship for you, that you may complete the number and celebrate God for having guided you so that you may be thankful. And when my servants ask you about me, I am near. I answer the call of the caller when he calls on me. So let them answer me and have faith in me that they may be rightly guided. Permitted for you is intercourse with your wives on the night of the fast. They are a garment for you, and you are a garment for them. God knows that you used to betray yourselves, but he turned to you and pardoned you. So approach them now and seek what God has ordained for you and eat and drink until the white streak of dawn can be distinguished from the black streak. Then complete the fast until nightfall. But do not approach them while you are in retreat at the mosques. These are the limits of God, so do not come near them. God thus clarifies his revelations to the people that they may attain piety. And do not consume one another's wealth by unjust means, nor offer it as bribes to the officials in order to consume part of other people's wealth illicitly while you know. They ask you about the crescents, say, they are timetables for people and for the Hajj. It is not virtuous that you approach homes from their backs, but virtue is to be pious. So approach homes from their doors and observe God that you may succeed. And fight in the cause of God those who fight you, but do not commit aggression. God does not love the aggressors and kill them wherever you overtake them and expel them from where they had expelled you. Oppression is more serious than murder, but do not fight them at the sacred mosque unless they fight you there. If they fight you, then kill them, such as the retribution of the disbelievers. But if they cease, then God is forgiving and merciful. Then fight them until there is no oppression and worship becomes devoted to God alone. But if they cease, then let there be no hostility except against the oppressors. The sacred month for the sacred month, and sacrilege calls for retaliation. Whoever commits aggression against you, retaliate against him in the same measure as he has committed against you. And be conscious of God, and know that God is with the righteous, and, and spend in the cause of God. And do not throw yourselves with your own hands into ruin, and be charitable. God loves the charitable, and carry out the Hajj and the Umrah for God. But if you are prevented, then whatever is feasible of offerings, and do not shave your heads until the offering has reached its destination. Whoever of you is sick or has an injury of the head, then redemption of fasting or charity or worship, when you are secure, whoever continues the Umrah until the Hajj, then whatever is feasible of offering. But if he lacks the means, then fasting for three days during the Hajj, and seven when you have returned, making ten in all. This is for he whose household is not present at the sacred mosque, and remain conscious of God, and know that God is stern in retribution. The Hajj is during specific months. Whoever decides to perform the Hajj, there shall be no sexual relations, nor misconduct, nor quarreling during the Hajj. And whatever good you do, God knows it, and take provisions, but the best provision is righteousness, and be mindful of me, O people of understanding, 
you commit no error by seeking bounty from your Lord. When you disperse from Arafat, remember God at the sacred landmark, and remember Him as He has guided you. Although before that, you were of those astray. Then disperse from where the people disperse, and ask God for forgiveness. God is most forgiving, most merciful. When you've completed your rites, remember God as you remember your parents, or even more. Among the people is he who says, Our Lord, give us in this world, yet he has no share in the hereafter. And among them is he who says, Our Lord, give us goodness in this world and goodness in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the fire. These will have a share of what they have earned. God is swift in reckoning. And remember God during the designated does, but whoever hurries on in two days commits no wrong, and whoever stays on commits no wrong, provided he maintains righteousness. And obey God, and know that to him you will be gathered. Among the people is he whose speech about the worldly life impresses you, and he calls God to witness what is in his heart, while he is the most hostile of adversaries. When he gains power, he strives to spread corruption on earth, destroying properties and lives. God does not like corruption, and when he is told beware of God, his pride leads him to more sin. Hell is enough for him, a dreadful abode. And among the people is he who sells himself seeking God's approval. God is kind towards the servants. O you who believe, enter into submission wholeheartedly and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. He is to you an outright enemy. But if you slip after the proofs have come to you, know that God is powerful and wise. Are they waiting for God himself to come to them in the shadows of the clouds, together with the angels, and thus the matter is settled? All things are returned to God. Ask the children of Israel how many clear signs we have given them. Whoever alters the blessing of God after it has come to him, God is severe in retribution. Beautified is the life of this world for those who disbelieve, and they ridicule those who believe. But the righteous will be above them on the day of resurrection. God provides to whomever he wills without measure. Humanity used to be one community. Then God sent the prophets, bringing good news and giving warnings. And he sent down with them the scripture with the truth to judge between people regarding their differences. But none differed over it, except those who were given it, after the proofs had come to them, out of mutual envy between them. Then God guided those who believed to the truth they had disputed, in accordance with his will. God guides whom he wills to a straight path. Or do you expect to enter paradise before the example of those who came before you had reached you? Adversity and hardship had afflicted them, and they were so shaken up that the messenger and those who believed with him said, When is God's victory? Indeed, God's victory is near. They ask you what they should give. Say, whatever charity you give is for the parents and the relatives and the orphans and the poor and the wayfarer. Whatever good you do, God is aware of it. Fighting is ordained for you, even though you dislike it. But it may be that you dislike something while it is good for you, and it may be that you like something while it is bad for you. God knows, and you do not know. They ask you about fighting during the holy month. Say, fighting during it is deplorable. But to bar others from God's path, and to disbelieve in Him, and to prevent access to the holy mosque, and to expel its people from it, are more deplorable with God and persecution is more serious than killing. They will not cease to fight you until they turn you back from your religion if they can. Whoever among you turns back from his religion and dies a disbeliever, those are they whose works will come to nothing in this life and in the hereafter. Those are the inmates of the fire, abiding in it forever. Those 
those who believed and those who migrated and fought for the sake of God, those look forward to God's mercy. God is forgiving and merciful. They ask you about intoxicants and gambling, say, there is gross sin in them and some benefits for people, but their sinfulness outweighs their benefit. And they ask you about what they should give, say, the surplus. Thus, God explains the revelations to you, so that you may think about this world and the next, and they ask you about orphans. Say, improvement for them is best, and if you intermix with them, then they are your brethren. God knows the dishonest from the honest. Had God willed, he could have overburdened you. God is mighty and wise. Do not marry idolatresses unless they have believed. A believing maid is better than an idolatress, even if you like her. And do not marry idolaters unless they have believed. A believing servant is better than an idolater, even if you like him. These call to the fire, but God calls to the garden and to forgiveness by his leave. He makes clear his communications to the people that they may be mindful. And they ask you about menstruation, say, it is harmful, so keep away from women during menstruation and do not approach them until they have become pure. Once they have become pure, approach them in the way God has directed you. God loves the repentant, and he loves those who keep clean. Your women are cultivation for you, so approach your cultivation whenever you like and send ahead for yourselves, and fear God, and know that you will meet him and give good news to the believers, and do not allow your oaths in God's name to hinder you from virtue and righteousness and making peace between people. God is listener and knower. God does not hold you responsible for your unintentional oaths, but he holds you responsible for your intentions. God is forgiving and forbearing. Those who vow abstinence from their wives must wait for four months. But if they reconcile, God is forgiving and merciful. And if they resolve to divorce, God is hearing and knowing. Divorced women shall wait by themselves for three periods, and it is not lawful for them to conceal what God has created in their wombs if they believe in God and the last day. Meanwhile, their husbands have the better right to take them back if they desire reconciliation, and women have rights similar to their obligations according to what is fair, but men have a degree over them. God is mighty and wise. Divorce is allowed twice, then either honorable retention or setting free kindly. It is not lawful for you to take back anything you have given them unless they fear that they cannot maintain God's limits. If you fear that they cannot maintain God's limits, then there is no blame on them if she sacrifices something for her release. These are God's limits, so do not transgress them. Those who transgress God's limits are the unjust. If he divorces her, she shall not be lawful for him again until she has married another husband. If the latter divorces her, then there is no blame on them for reuniting, provided they think they can maintain God's limits. These are God's limits. He makes them clear to people who know. When you divorce women and they have reached their term, either retain them amicably or release them amicably but do not retain them to hurt them and commit aggression. Whoever does that has wronged himself. And do not take God's revelations for a joke and remember God's favor to you and that he revealed to you the scripture and wisdom to teach you. And fear God and know that God is aware of everything. When you divorce women and they have reached their term, do not prevent them from marrying their husbands, provided they agree on fair terms. Thereby is advised whoever among you believes in God and the last day. That is better and more decent for you. God knows, and you do not know. 
Mothers may nurse their infants for two whole years for those who desire to complete the nursing period. It is the duty of the father to provide for them and clothe them in a proper manner. No soul shall be burdened beyond its capacity. No mother shall be harmed on account of her child and no father shall be harmed on account of his child. The same duty rests upon the heir. If the couple desire weaning, by mutual consent and consultation, they commit no error by doing so. You commit no error by hiring nursing mothers as long as you pay them fairly. And be wary of God and know that God is seeing of what you do. As for those among you who die and leave widows behind, their widows shall wait by themselves for four months and ten days. When they have reached their term, there is no blame on you regarding what they might honorably do with themselves. God is fully acquainted with what you do. You commit no error by announcing your engagement to women or by keeping it to yourselves. God knows that you will be thinking about them, but do not meet them secretly unless you have something proper to say. And do not confirm the marriage tie until the writing is fulfilled. And know that God knows what is in your souls, so beware of him and know that God is forgiving and forbearing. You commit no error by divorcing women before having touched them or before having set the dowry for them and compensate them, the wealthy according to his means and the poor according to his means, with a fair compensation, a duty upon the doers of good. If you divorce them before you have touched them, but after you had set the dowry for them, give them half of what you specified, unless they forego the right, or the one in whose hand is the marriage contract forgoes it. But to forego is nearer to piety. And do not forget generosity between one another. God is seeing of everything you do. Guard your prayers and the middle prayer and stand before God in devotion. But if you are in fear, then on foot or riding, and when you are safe, remember God, as he taught you what you did not know. Those of you who die and leave wives behind, a will shall provide their wives with support for a year, provided they do not leave. If they leave, you are not to blame for what they do with themselves, provided it is reasonable. God is mighty and wise and divorced women shall be provided for equitably a duty upon the righteous. God thus explains his revelations to you so that you may understand. Have you not considered those who fled their homes by the thousands, fearful of death? God said to them, die. Then he revived them. God is gracious towards the people, but most people are not appreciative. Fight in the cause of God, and know that God is hearing and knowing. Who is he who will offer God a generous loan, so he will multiply it for him manifold? God receives and amplifies, and to him you will be returned. Have you not considered the notables of the children of Israel after Moses, when they said to a prophet of theirs, appoint a king for us, and we will fight in the cause of God. He said, Is it possible that, if fighting was ordained for you, you would not fight? They said, Why would we not fight in the cause of God when we were driven out of our homes along with our children? But when fighting was ordained for them, they turned away, except for a few of them. But God is aware of the wrongdoers. Their prophet said to them, God has appointed Saul to be your king. They said, how can he have authority over us when we are more worthy of authority than he, and he was not given plenty of wealth? He said, God has chosen him over you and has increased him in knowledge and stature. God bestows his sovereignty upon whomever he wills. God is embracing and knowing. And their prophet said to them, the proof of his kingship is that the ark will be restored to you, bringing tranquility from your Lord and relics left by the family of Moses and the family of Aaron. It will be carried by the angels, and that is a sign for you if you are believers. When Saul set out with the troops, he said, God will be testing you with a river 
Whoever drinks from it does not belong with me, but whoever does not drink from it does belong with me, except for whoever scoops up a little with his hand. But they drank from it except for a few of them. Then, when he crossed it, he and those who believed with him, they said, we have no strength to face Goliath and his troops today. But those who knew that they would meet God said, how many a small group has defeated a large group by God's will? God is with the steadfast. And when they confronted Goliath and his troops, they said, Our Lord, pour down patience on us and strengthen our foothold and support us against the faithless people. And they defeated them by God's leave. And David killed Goliath and God gave him sovereignty and wisdom and taught him as he willed. Were it not for God restraining the people, some by means of others, the earth would have gone to ruin. But God is gracious towards mankind. These are God's revelations, which we recite to you in truth. You are one of the messengers. These messengers, uh, we gave some advantage over others. To some of them, God spoke directly, and some he raised in rank. We gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clear miracles, and we strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. Had God willed, those who succeeded them would not have fought one another after the clear signs had come to them, but they disputed. Some of them believed and some of them disbelieved. Had God willed, they would not have fought one another, but God does whatever he desires. O oh, you who believe, spend from what we have given you before a day comes in which there is neither trading nor friendship nor intercession. The disbelievers are the wrongdoers. God. There is no God except He, the living, the everlasting. Neither slumber overtakes Him nor sleep. To Him belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them, and they cannot grasp any of his knowledge except as he wills. His throne extends over the heavens and the earth, and their preservation does not burden him. He is the Most High, the Great. There shall be no compulsion in religion. The right way has become distinct from the wrong way. Whoever renounces evil and believes in God has grasped the most trustworthy handle which does not break. God is hearing and knowing. God is the Lord of those who believe. He brings them out of darkness and into light. As for those who disbelieve, their lords are the evil ones. They bring them out of light and into darkness. These are the inmates of the fire in which they will abide forever. Have you not considered him who argued with Abraham about his Lord because God had given him sovereignty? Abraham said, My Lord is he who gives life and causes death. He said, I give life and cause death. Abraham said, God brings the sun from the east, so bring it from the west. So the blasphemer was confounded. God does not guide the wrongdoing people. Or like him who passed by a town collapsed on its foundations. He said, how can God revive this after its demise? Thereupon, God caused him to die for a hundred years and then resurrected him. He said, For how long have you tarried? He said, I have tarried for a day or part of a day. He said, No, you have tarried for a hundred years. Now look at your food and your drink. It is not spoiled. And look at your donkey, and we will make you a wonder for mankind. And look at the bones, how we arrange them, and then clothe them with flesh. So when it became clear to him, he said, I know that God has power over all things. And when Abraham said, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead, he said, Have you not believed? He said, Yes, but to put my heart at ease. He said, Take four birds and incline them to yourself. Then place a part on each hill, then call to them, and they will come rushing to you, and know that God is powerful and wise. The parable of those who spend their wealth in God's way is that of a grain that produces seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains, 
God multiplies for whom he wills. God is bounteous and knowing. Those who spend their wealth in the way of God and then do not follow up what they spent with reminders of their generosity or with insults will have their reward with their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. Kind words and forgiveness are better than charity followed by insults. God is rich and clement. O oh, you who believe, do not nullify your charitable deeds with reminders and hurtful words, like him who spends his wealth to be seen by the people and does not believe in God and the last day. His likeness is that of a smooth rock covered with soil. A downpour strikes it and leaves it bare. They gain nothing from their efforts. God does not guide the disbelieving people. And the parable of those who spend their wealth seeking God's approval and to strengthen their souls is that of a garden on a hillside. If heavy rain falls on it, its produce is doubled. And if no heavy rain falls, then dew is enough. God is seeing of everything you do. Would any one of you like to have a garden of palms and vines under which rivers flow with all kinds of fruit in it for him and old age has stricken him and he has weak children, then a tornado with fire batters it and it burns down? Thus God makes clear the signs for you so that you may reflect. O oh, you who believe, give of the good things you have earned and from what we have produced for you from the earth and do not pick the inferior things to give away. When you yourselves would not accept it, accept with eyes closed. And know that God is sufficient and praiseworthy. Satan promises you poverty and urges you to immorality. But God promises you forgiveness from himself and grace. God is embracing and knowing. He gives wisdom to whomever he wills. Whoever is given wisdom has been given much good but none pays heed except those with insight. Whatever charity you give or a pledge you fulfill, God knows it. The wrongdoers have no helpers. If you give charity openly, that is good. But if you keep it secret and give it to the needy in private, that is better for you. It will atone for some of your misdeeds. God is cognizant of what you do. Their guidance is not your responsibility, but God guides whom he wills. Any charity you give is for your own good. Any charity you give shall be for the sake of God. Any charity you give will be repaid to you in full and you will not be wronged. It is for the poor, those who are restrained in the way of God and unable to travel in the land. The unaware would think them rich due to their dignity. You will recognize them by their features. They do not ask from people insistently. Whatever charity you give, God is aware of it. Those who spend their wealth by night and day, privately and publicly, will receive their reward from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. Those who swallow usury will not rise, except as someone driven mad by Satan's touch. That is because they say, commerce is like usury. But God has permitted commerce and has forbidden usury. Whoever, on receiving advice from his Lord refrains, may keep his past earnings and his case rests with God. But whoever resumes, these are the dwellers of the fire, wherein they will abide forever. God condemns usury and he blesses charities. God does not love any sinful ingrate. Those who believe and do good deeds and pray regularly and give charity they will have their reward with their Lord. They will have no fear, nor shall they grieve. O oh, you who believe, fear God and forgo what remains of usury, if you are believers. If you do not, then take notice of a war by God and his messenger. But if you repent, you may keep your capital, neither wronging nor being wronged. But if he is in hardship, then deferment until a time of ease but to remit it as charity is better for you, if you only knew, and guard yourselves against a day when you will be returned to God. Then each soul will be rewarded fully for what it has earned, and they will not be wronged. 
O oh, you who believe, when you incur debt among yourselves for a certain period of time, write it down, and have a scribe write in your presence, in all fairness, and let no scribe refuse to write as God has taught him. So let him write and let the debtor dictate, and let him fear God his Lord and diminish nothing from it. But if the debtor is mentally deficient or weak or unable to dictate, then let his guardian dictate with honesty and call to witness two men from among you. If two men are not available, then one man and two women whose testimony is acceptable to all. If one of them fails to remember, the other would remind her. Witnesses must not refuse when called upon. And do not think it too trivial to write down, whether small or large, including the time of repayment. That is more equitable with God and stronger as evidence and more likely to prevent doubt, except in the case of a spot transaction between you, then there is no blame on you if you do not write it down. And let there be witnesses whenever you conclude a contract, and let no harm be done to either scribe or witness. If you do that, it is corruption on your part, and fear God. God teaches you. God is aware of everything. If you're on a journey and cannot find a scribe, then a security deposit should be handed over. But if you trust one another, let the trustee fulfill his trust and let him fear God, his Lord. And do not conceal testimony. Whoever conceals it is sinner at heart. God is aware of what you do. To God belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. Whether you reveal what is within yourselves or conceal it, God will call you to account for it. He forgives whom he wills, and he punishes whom he wills. God is able to do all things. The messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord, as did the believers. They all have believed in God and his angels and his scriptures and his messengers. We make no distinction between any of his messengers, and they say, we hear and we obey. Your forgiveness, our Lord, to you is the destiny. God does not burden any soul beyond its capacity. To its credit is what it earns, and against it is what it commits. Our Lord, do not condemn us if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not burden us as you have burdened those before us. Our Lord, do not burden us with more than we have strength to bear, and pardon us, and forgive us, and have mercy on us. You are our Lord and Master, so help us against the disbelieving people. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, Alif, Lamb, Meme. God, there is no God but He, the living, the eternal. He sent down to you the book with the truth, confirming what came before it, and He sent down the Torah and the Gospel aforetime as guidance for mankind, and he sent down the criterion. Those who have rejected God's signs will have a severe punishment. God is mighty, able to take revenge. Nothing is hidden from God on earth or in the heaven. It is he who forms you in the wombs as he wills. There is no God except he the Almighty, the wise. It is he who revealed to you the book. Some of its verses are definitive. They are the foundation of the book, and others are unspecific. As for those in whose hearts is deviation, they follow the unspecific part, seeking dissent and seeking to derive an interpretation. But none knows its interpretation except God and those firmly rooted in knowledge say, we believe in it, all is from our Lord, but none recollects except those with understanding. Our Lord, do not cause our hearts to swerve after you have guided us and bestow on us mercy from your presence. You are the giver. Our Lord, you will gather the people for a day in which there is no doubt God will never break his promise. 
As for those who disbelieve, neither their wealth nor their children will avail them anything against God. These will be fuel for the fire. Like the behavior of Pharaoh's people and those before them, they rejected our signs, so God seized them for their sins. God is strict in retribution. Say to those who disbelieve, you will be defeated and rounded up into hell, an awful resting place. There was a sign for you in the two parties that met, one party fighting in the way of God, and the other was disbelieving. They saw them with their own eyes twice their number, but God supports with his help whomever he wills, and that is a lesson for those with insight. Adorned for the people is the love of desires such as women and children, and piles upon piles of gold and silver, and branded horses, and livestock and fields. These are the conveniences of the worldly life, but with God lies the finest resort. Say, shall I inform you of something better than that? For those who are righteous, with their Lord are gardens beneath which rivers flow, where they will remain forever, and purified spouses, and acceptance from God. God is observant of the servants. Those who say, Our Lord, we have believed, so forgive us our sins, and save us from the suffering of the fire. The patient, and the truthful, and the reverent, and the charitable, and the seekers of forgiveness at dawn. God bears witness that there is no God, but He, as do the angels, and those endowed with knowledge, upholding justice. There is no God, but He, the mighty, the wise. Religion with God is Islam. Those to whom the scripture was given differed only after knowledge came to them out of envy among themselves. Whoever rejects the signs of God, God is quick to take account. If they argue with you, say, I have surrendered myself to God, and those who follow me, and say to those who were given the scripture, and to the unlearned, have you surrendered? If they have surrendered, then they are guided, but if they turn away, then your duty is to convey. God is seeing of the servants. As for those who defy God's revelations, and kill the prophets unjustly, and kill those who advocate justice among the people, promise them a painful retribution. They are those whose deeds will come to nothing in this world and in the hereafter, and they will have no saviors. Have you not considered those who were given a share of the scripture as they were called to the scripture of God to arbitrate between them? Then some of them turned back and declined. That is because they said, the fire will not touch us except for a limited number of days. They have been misled in their religion by the lies they fabricated. How about when we gather them for a day in which there is no doubt, and each soul will be paid in full for what it has earned, and they will not be wronged? Say, O oh God, owner of sovereignty, you grant sovereignty to whom you will, and you strip sovereignty from whom you will. You honor whom you will, and you humiliate whom you will. In your hand is all goodness. You are capable of all things. You merge the night into the day, and you merge the day into the night, and you bring the living out of the dead, and you bring the dead out of the living, and you provide for whom you will without measure. Believers are not to take disbelievers for friends instead of believers. Whoever does that has nothing to do with God unless it is to protect your own selves against them. God warns you to beware of him. To God is the destiny. Say whether you conceal what is in your hearts or disclose it, God knows it. He knows everything in the heavens and the earth. God is powerful over everything. On the day when every soul finds all the good it has done presented, and as for the evil it has done, it will wish there were a great distance between them. God cautions you of himself. God is kind towards the servants that say, if you love God, then follow me 
and God will love you and will forgive you your sins. God is forgiving and merciful. Say, obey God and the messenger, but if they turn away, God does not love the faithless. God chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran over all mankind. Offspring one of the other, God is hearer and knower. The wife of Imran said, My Lord, I have vowed to you what is in my womb, dedicated, so accept from me. You are the hearer and knower. And when she delivered her, she said, My Lord, I have delivered a female. And God was well aware of what she has delivered. And the male is not like the female. And I have named her Mary and have commended her and her descendants to your protection from Satan, the outcast. Her Lord accepted her with a gracious reception and brought her a beautiful upbringing and entrusted her to the care of Zechariah. Whenever Zechariah entered upon her in the sanctuary, he found her with provision. He said, O Mary, where did you get this from? She said, it is from God. God provides to whom he wills without reckoning. Thereupon, Zechariah prayed to his Lord. He said, My Lord, bestow on me good offspring from your presence. You are the hearer of prayers. Then the angels called out to him as he stood praying in the sanctuary. God gives you good news of John, confirming a word from God, and honorable and moral, and a prophet, one of the upright. He said, My Lord, how will I have a son when old age has overtaken me and my wife is barren? He said, even so, God does whatever he wills. He said, my Lord, give me a sign. He said, your sign is that you shall not speak to the people for three days except by gestures and remember your Lord much and praise in the evening and the morning. The angel said, O Mary, God has chosen you and has purified you. He has chosen you over all the women of the world. O Mary, be devoted to your Lord and bow down and kneel with those who kneel. These are accounts from the unseen, which we reveal to you. You were not with them when they cast their lots as to which of them would take charge of Mary, nor were you with them as they quarreled. The angel said, O oh Mary, God gives you good news of a word from him. His name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, well esteemed in this world and the next and one of the nearest. He will speak to the people from the crib and in adulthood and will be one of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how can I have a child when no man has touched me? He said, It will be so. God creates whatever he wills. To have anything done, he only says to it, be, and it is. And he will teach him the scripture and wisdom and the Torah and the gospel. A messenger to the children of Israel. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I make for you out of clay the figure of a bird. Then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by God's leave. And I heal the blind and the leprous, and I revive the dead by God's leave. And I inform you concerning what you eat and what you store in your homes. In that is a sign for you, if you are believers, and verifying what lies before me of the Torah, and to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord, so fear God and obey me. God is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. That is a straight path. When Jesus sensed disbelief on their part, he said, Who are my allies towards God? The disciples said, We are God's allies. We have believed in God and bear witness that we submit. Our Lord, we have believed in what you have revealed and we have followed the messenger, so count us among the witnesses. They planned and God planned, but God is the best of planners. God said, O oh Jesus, I am terminating your life and raising you to me and clearing you of those who disbelieve. And I will make those who follow you superior to those who disbelieve. 
until the day of resurrection. Then to me is your return. Then I will judge between you regarding what you were disputing. As for those who disbelieve, I will punish them with a severe punishment in this world and the next, and they will have no helpers. And as for those who believe and do good works, he will give them their rewards in full. God does not love the unjust. This is what we recite to you of the verses in the wise reminder. The likeness of Jesus in God's sight is that of Adam. He created him from dust, then said to him, be, and he was. The truth is from your Lord, so do not be of those who doubt. And if anyone disputes with you about him, after the knowledge that has come to you, say, Come, let us call our children and your children, and our women and your women, and ourselves and yourselves, and let us invoke God's curse on the liars. This is the narrative of truth. There is no God but God. God is the mighty, the wise. But if they turn away, God knows the corrupt. Say, O people of the book, come to terms common between us and you, that we worship none but God, and that we associate nothing with him, and that none of us takes others as lords besides God. And if they turn away, say, bear witness that we have submitted. O people of the book, why do you argue about Abraham when the Torah and the gospel were not revealed until after him? Will you not reason? Here you are. You argue about things you know, but why do you argue about things you do not know? God knows, and you do not know. Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was a monotheist, a Muslim, and he was not of the polytheists. The people most deserving of Abraham are those who followed him and this prophet, and those who believe. God is the guardian of the believers. A party of the people of the book would love to lead you astray, but they only lead themselves astray, and they do not realize it. O oh, people of the book, why do you reject the revelations of God, even as you witness? O oh, people of the book, why do you confound the truth with falsehood, and knowingly conceal the truth? Some of the people of the book say, Believe in what was revealed to the believers at the beginning of the day and reject it at its end so that they may return. And trust none except those who follow your religion. Say, guidance is God's guidance. If someone is given the like of what you were given or they argue with you before your Lord, say, all grace is in God's hand. He gives it to whomever he wills. God is bounteous and knowing. He specifies his mercy for whomever he wills. God is possessor of sublime grace. Among the people of the book is he who, if you entrust him with a heap of gold, he will give it back to you. And among them is he who, if you entrust him with a single coin, he will not give it back to you unless you keep after him. That is because they say, we are under no obligation towards the Gentiles. They tell lies about God, and they know it. Indeed, whoever fulfills his commitments and maintains piety, God loves the pious. Those who exchange the covenant of God and their vows for a small price will have no share in the hereafter, and God will not speak to them, nor will he look at them on the day of resurrection, nor will he purify them. They will have a painful punishment. And among them are those who twist the scripture with their tongues, that you may think it from the scripture, when it is not from the scripture. And they say, it is from God, when it is not from God. They tell lies and attribute them to God, knowingly. No person to whom God has given the scripture and wisdom and prophethood would ever say to the people, be my worshippers rather than gods. Rather be people of the Lord according to the scripture you teach and the teachings you learn. Nor would he command you to take the angels and the prophets as lords. Would he command you to infidelity after you have submitted God received the covenant of the prophets inasmuch as I have given you of scripture and wisdom. 
Should a messenger come to you verifying what you have, you shall believe in him and support him. He said, Do you affirm my covenant and take it upon yourselves? They said, We affirm it. He said, Then bear witness, and I am with you among the witnesses. Whoever turns away after that, these are the deceitful. Do they desire other than the religion of God, when to him has submitted everything in the heavens and the earth, willingly or unwillingly, and to him they will be returned? Say, we believe in God and in what was revealed to us, and in what was revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the patriarchs, and in what was given to Moses and Jesus and the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and to him we submit. Whoever seeks other than Islam as a religion, it will not be accepted from him, and in the hereafter he will be among the losers. How will God guide a people who disbelieved after having believed and had witnessed that the messenger is true and the clear proofs had come to them? God does not guide the unjust people. Those, their penalty is that upon them falls the curse of God and of the angels and of all mankind, remaining in it eternally without their punishment being eased from them and without being reprieved, except those who repent afterwards and reform, for God is forgiving and merciful. As for those who disbelieve after having believed, then plunge deeper into disbelief, their repentance will not be accepted. These are the lost. As for those who disbelieve and die, disbelievers, even the earth full of gold would not be accepted from any of them were he to offer it for ransom. These will have a painful torment and will have no saviors. You will not attain virtuous conduct until you give of what you cherish. Whatever you give away, God is aware of it. All food was permissible to the children of Israel, except what Israel forbade for himself before the Torah was revealed. Say, bring the Torah and read it, if you are truthful. Whoever forges lies about God after that. These are the unjust. Say, God has spoken the truth, so follow the religion of Abraham the monotheist. He was not a pagan. The first house established for mankind is the one at Becca, blessed and guidance for all people. In it are evident signs the station of Abraham. Whoever enters it attains security. Pilgrimage to the house is a duty to God for all who can make the journey. But as for those who refuse, God is independent of the worlds. Say, O oh people of the scripture, why do you reject the revelations of God when God witnesses what you do? Say, O oh people of the scripture, why do you hinder from God's path those who believe, seeking to distort it even though you are witnesses? God is not unaware of what you do. O oh, you who believe, if you obey a party of those who were given the scripture, they will turn you, after your belief, into disbelievers. And how could you disbelieve when God's revelations are being recited to you, and among you is his messenger? Whoever cleaves to God has been guided to a straight path. O oh, you who believe, revere God with due reverence, and do not die except as Muslims and hold fast to the rope of God altogether, and do not become divided, and remember God's blessings upon you, how you were enemies, and he reconciled your hearts, and by his grace you became brethren, and you were on the brink of a pit of fire, and he saved you from it. God thus clarifies his revelations for you, so that you may be guided, and let there be among you a community calling to virtue and advocating righteousness and deterring from evil. These are the successful. Do not be like those who separated and disputed after the clear proofs came to them. For them is a great punishment. On the day when some faces will be whitened and some faces will be blackened, 
As for those whose faces are blackened, did you disbelieve after your belief? Then taste the punishment for having disbelieved. But as for those whose faces are whitened, they are in God's mercy, remaining in it forever. These are the revelations of God. We recite them to you in truth. God desires no injustice for mankind. To God belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. And to God, all events are referred. You are the best community that ever emerged for humanity. You advocate what is moral and forbid what is immoral and believe in God. Had the people of the scripture believed, it would have been better for them. Among them are the believers, but most of them are sinners. They will do you no harm beyond insulting you, and if they fight you, they will turn around and flee, then they will not be helped. They shall be humiliated wherever they are encountered, except through a rope from God and a rope from the people, and they incurred wrath from God and were stricken with misery. That is because they rejected God's revelations and killed the prophets unjustly. That is because they rebelled and committed aggression. They are not alike. Among the people of the scripture is a community that is upright. They recite God's revelations throughout the night and they prostrate themselves. They believe in God and the last day and advocate righteousness and forbid evil and are quick to do good deeds. These are among the righteous. Whatever good they do, they will not be denied it. God knows the righteous. As for those who disbelieve, neither their possessions nor their children will avail them anything against God. These are the inhabitants of the fire, abiding therein forever. The parable of what they spend in this worldly life is that of a frosty wind that strikes the harvest of a people who have wronged their souls and destroys it. God did not wrong them, but they wronged their own selves. So you who believe, do not befriend outsiders who never cease to wish you harm. They love to see you suffer. Hatred has already appeared from their mouths, but what their hearts conceal is worse. We have made the messages clear for you, if you understand. There you are, you love them, but they do not love you, and you believe in the entire scripture, and when they meet you, they say, we believe, but when they are alone, they bite their fingers in rage at you. Say, die in your rage. God knows what is within the hearts. If something good happens to you, it upsets them, but if something bad befalls you, they rejoice at it. But if you persevere and maintain righteousness, their schemes will not harm you at all. God comprehends what they do. Remember when you left your home in the morning to assign battle positions for the believers. God is hearing and knowing. When two groups among you almost faltered, but God was their protector. So in God, let the believers put their trust. God had given you victory at Bada when you were weak. So fear God that you may be thankful. When you said to the believers, is it not enough for you that your Lord has reinforced you with 3,000 angels sent down? It is, but if you persevere and remain cautious and they attack you suddenly, your Lord will reinforce you with 5,000 angels well-trained. God made it but a message of hope for you and to reassure your hearts thereby. Victory comes only from God the Almighty, the wise. He thus cuts off a section of those who disbelieved or subdues them, so they retreat disappointed. It is no concern of yours whether he redeems them or punishes them. They are wrongdoers. To God belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. He forgives whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills. God is most forgiving, most merciful. O oh, you who believe, do not feed on usury compounded over and over and fear God so that you may prosper and guard yourselves against the fire that is prepared for the disbelievers and obey God and the messenger that you may obtain mercy. 
and race towards forgiveness from your Lord and a garden as wide as the heavens and the earth prepared for the righteous, those who give in prosperity and adversity, and those who restrain anger, and those who forgive people. God loves the doers of good, and those who, when they commit an indecency or wrong themselves, remember God and ask forgiveness for their sins, and who forgive sins except God, and they do not persist in their wrongdoing while they know. Those, their reward is forgiveness from their Lord, and gardens beneath which rivers flow, abiding therein forever. How excellent is the reward of the workers! Many societies have passed away before you, so travel the earth and note the fate of the deniers. This is a proclamation to humanity and guidance and advice for the righteous. And do not waver nor feel remorse. You are the superior ones if you are believers. If a wound afflicts you, a similar wound has afflicted the others. Such days we alternate between the people that God may know those who believe and take martyrs from among you. God does not love the evildoers so that God may prove those who believe and eliminate the disbelievers? Or do you expect to enter paradise before God has distinguished those among you who strive and before he has distinguished the steadfast? You used to wish for death before you have faced it. Now you have seen it before your own eyes. Muhammad is no more than a messenger. Messengers have passed on before him. If he dies or gets killed, Will you turn on your heels? He who turns on his heels will not harm God in any way, and God will reward the appreciative. No soul can die except by God's leave at a predetermined time. Whoever desires the reward of the world, we will give him some of it, and whoever desires the reward of the hereafter, we will give him some of it, and we will reward the appreciative. How many a prophet fought alongside him numerous godly people, they did not waver for what afflicted them in the cause of God, nor did they weaken, nor did they give in. God loves those who endure. Their only words were, Our Lord, forgive us our offenses and our excesses in our conduct and strengthen our foothold and help us against the disbelieving people. So God gave them the reward of this world and the excellent reward of the hereafter. God loves the doers of good. O oh, you who believe, if you obey those who disbelieve, they will turn you back on your heels, and you end up losers. God is your master, and he is the best of helpers. We will throw terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve, because they attribute to God partners for which he revealed no sanction. Their lodging is the fire. Miserable is the lodging of the evildoers. God has fulfilled his promise to you, and you defeated them by his leave, until when you faltered and disputed the command and disobeyed after he had shown you what you like. Some of you want this world and some of you want the next. Then he turned you away from them to test you, but he pardoned you. God is gracious towards the believers. Remember when you fled not caring for anyone, even though the messenger was calling you from your rear. Then he repaid you with sorrow upon sorrow, so that you would not grieve over what you missed or for what afflicted you. God is informed of what you do. Then after the setback, he sent down security upon you. Slumber overcame some of you, while others cared only for themselves, thinking of God thoughts that were untrue, thoughts of ignorance, saying, is anything up to us? Say, everything is up to God. They conceal within themselves what they do not reveal to you, and they say, if it was up to us, none of us would have been killed here. Say, even if you had stayed in your homes, those destined to be killed would have marched into their deathbeds. God thus tests what is in your minds and purifies what is in your hearts. God knows what the hearts contain. Those of you who turned back on the day when the two armies clashed, it was Satan who caused them to backslide on account of some of what they have earned. But God has forgiven them. God is forgiving of a to die. Go you who believe, 
Do not be like those who disbelieved and said of their brethren who marched in the land or went on the offensive, had they stayed with us, they would not have died or been killed. So that God may make it a cause of regret in their hearts. God gives life and causes death. God is seeing of what you do. If you're killed in the cause of God or die, forgiveness and mercy from God are better than what they hoard. If you die or are killed, to God you will be gathered up. It is by of grace from God that you were gentle with them. Had you been harsh, hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you. So pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult them in the conduct of affairs. And when you make a decision, put your trust in God. God loves the trusting. If God supports you, there is none who can overcome you. But if he fails you, who is there to help you after him? So in God, let the believers put their trust. It is not for a prophet to act dishonestly. Whoever acts dishonestly will bring his dishonesty on the day of resurrection. Then every soul will be paid in full for what it has earned, and they will not be wronged. Is someone who pursues God's approval the same as someone who incurs God's wrath and his refuge is hell, the miserable destination? They have different ranks with God, and God is seeing of what they do. God has blessed the believers as he raised up among them a messenger from among themselves who recites to them his revelations and purifies them and teaches them the scripture and wisdom, although before that they were in evident error. And when a calamity befell you, even after you had inflicted twice as much, you said, how is this? Say, it is from your own selves. God is able to do all things. What befell you on the day the two armies clashed was with God's permission, that he may know the believers, and that he may know the hypocrites. And it was said to them, come fight in the cause of God, or contribute. They said, if we knew how to fight, we would have followed you. On that day, they were closer to infidelity than they were to faith. They say with their mouths what is not in their hearts, but God knows what they hide. Those who said of their brethren as they stayed behind, had they obeyed us, they would not have been killed. Say, then avert death from yourselves if you are truthful. Do not consider those killed in the cause of God as dead. In fact, they are alive at their Lord, well provided for delighting in what God has given them out of his grace, and happy for those who have not yet joined them, that they have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. They rejoice in grace from God and bounty, and that God will not waste the reward of the faithful. Those who responded to God and the messenger despite the persecution they had suffered, for the virtuous and the pious among them is a great reward. Those to whom the people have said, the people have mobilized against you, so fear them. But this only increased them in faith. And they said, God is enough for us. He is the excellent protector. So they came back with grace from God and bounty and no harm having touched them. They pursued what pleases God. God possesses immense grace. That is only Satan frightening his partisans. So do not fear them, but fear me if you are believers. And do not be saddened by those who rush into disbelief. They will not harm God in the least. God desires to give them no share in the hereafter. A terrible torment awaits them. Those who exchange blasphemy for faith will not harm God in the least. A painful torment awaits them. Those who disbelieve should not assume that we respite them for their own good. In fact, we only respite them so that they may increase in sinfulness. A humiliating torment awaits them. God will not leave the believers as you are without distinguishing the wicked from the sincere. Nor will God inform you of the future, but God elects from among his messengers whom he wills. So believe in God and his messengers. If you believe and practice piety, 
you will have a splendid reward. Those who withhold what God has given them of his bounty should not assume that is good for them. In fact, it is bad for them. They will be encircled by their hoardings on the day of resurrection. To God belongs the inheritance of the heavens and the earth, and God is well acquainted with what you do. God has heard the statement of those who said, God is poor and we are rich. We will write down what they said and their wrongful killing of the prophets, and we will say, taste the torment of the burning. This is on account of what your hands have forwarded and because God is not unjust towards the creatures. Those of you who said God has made a covenant with us, that we shall not believe in any messenger unless he brings us uh, an offering to be consumed by fire. Say, messengers have come to you before me uh, with proofs and uh, with what you asked for. So why did you assassinate them if you are truthful? If they accuse you of lying, messengers before you were accused of lying. They came with the proofs and the psalms and the illuminating scripture. Every soul will have a taste of death and you will receive your recompense on the day of resurrection. Whoever is swayed from the fire and admitted to paradise has won. The life of this world is merely enjoyment of delusion. You will be tested through your possessions and your persons, and you will hear from those who received the scripture before you and from the idol worshippers much abuse. But if you persevere and lead a righteous life, that indeed is a mark of great determination. God received a pledge from those who were given the scripture. You shall proclaim it to the people and not conceal it. But they disregarded it behind their backs and exchanged it for a small price. What a miserable exchange they made. Do not think that those who rejoice in what they have done and love to be praised for what they have not done do not think they can evade the punishment. They will have a painful punishment. To God belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. God has power over all things. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of night and day, are signs for people of understanding. Those who remember God while standing and sitting and on their sides, and they reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth, our Lord, you did not create this in vain. Glory to you, so protect us from the punishment of the fire. Our Lord, whomever you commit to the fire, you have disgraced. The wrongdoers will have no helpers. Our Lord, we have heard a caller calling to the faith. Believe in your Lord, and we have believed. Our Lord... Forgive us our sins and remit our misdeeds and make us die in the company of the virtuous. Our Lord, and give us what you have promised us through your messengers and do not disgrace us on the day of resurrection. Surely you never break a promise. And so their Lord answered them, I will not waste the work of any worker among you, whether male or female. You are one of another. For those who emigrated and were expelled from their homes and were persecuted because of me and fought and were killed, I will remit for them their sins and will admit them into gardens beneath which rivers flow. A reward from God. With God is the ultimate reward. Do not be impressed by the disbelievers' movements in the land. A brief enjoyment, then their abode is hell. What a miserable resort. As for those who feared their Lord, for them will be gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever, hospitality from God. What God possesses is best for the just. Among the people of the scripture are those who believe in God and in what was revealed to you and in what was revealed to them. They are humble before God and they do not sell God's revelations for a cheap price. These will have their reward with their Lord. God is swift in reckoning. O you who believe, be patient and advocate patience and be united and revere God so that you may thrive. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, O people, 
fear your Lord, who created you from a single soul and created from it its mate and propagated from the many men and women and revere God whom you ask about and the parents. Surely God is watchful over you and give orphans their properties and do not substitute the bad for the good and do not consume their properties by combining them with yours for that would be a serious sin. If you fear you cannot act fairly towards the orphans, then marry the women you like, two or three or four. But if you fear you will not be fair, then one or what you already have. That makes it more likely that you avoid bias. Give women their dowries graciously. But if they willingly forgo some of it, then consume it with enjoyment and pleasure. Do not give the immature your money, which God has assigned to you for support, but provide for them from it and clothe them and speak to them with kind words. Test the orphans until they reach the age of marriage. If you find them to be mature enough, hand over their properties to them and do not consume it extravagantly or hastily before they grow up. The rich shall not charge any wage but the poor may charge fairly. When you hand over their properties to them, have it witnessed for them. God suffices as a reckoner. Men receive a share of what their parents and relatives leave and women receive a share of what their parents and relatives leave, be it little or much, a legal share. If the distribution is attended by the relatives and the orphans and the needy, Give them something out of it and speak to them kindly. Those who are concerned about the fate of their weak children in case they leave them behind should fear God and speak appropriate words. Those who consume the wealth of orphans illicitly consume only fire into their bellies and they will roast in a blaze. God instructs you regarding your children. The male receives the equivalent of the share of two females. If they are daughters, more than two, they get two thirds of what he leaves. If there is only one, she gets one half. As for the parents, each gets one sixth of what he leaves. If he had children, if he had no children and his parents inherit from him, his mother gets one third. If he has siblings, his mother gets one sixth. After fulfilling any bequest and paying off debts, your parents and your children, you do not know which are closer to you in welfare. This is God's law. God is knowing and judicious. You get one half of what your wives leave behind if they had no children. If they had children, you get one fourth of what they leave. After fulfilling any bequest and paying off debts, they get one-fourth of what you leave behind if you have no children. If you have children, they get one-eighth of what you leave. After fulfilling any bequest and paying off debts, if a man or woman leaves neither parents nor children, but has a brother or sister, each of them gets one-sixth. If there are more siblings, they share one-third. After fulfilling any bequest and paying off debts without any prejudice, this is a will from God. God is knowing and clement. These are the bounds set by God. Whoever obeys God and his messenger, he will admit him into gardens beneath which rivers flow to abide therein forever. That is a great attainment. But whoever disobeys God and his messenger and oversteps his bounds, he will admit him into a fire wherein he abides forever and he will have a shameful punishment. Those of your women who commit lewdness, you must have four witnesses against them from among you. If they testify, confine them to the homes until death claims them or God makes a way for them. If two men among you commit it, punish them both. But if they repent and reform, leave them alone. God is Redeemer, full of mercy. Repentance is available from God for those who commit evil out of ignorance and then repent soon after. These, God will relent towards them. God is knowing and wise. 
but repentance is not available for those who commit evils. Until when death approaches one of them, he says, Now I repent, nor for those who die as disbelievers. These, we have prepared for them a painful torment. Though you who believe, it is not permitted for you to inherit women against their will. And do not coerce them in order to take away some of what you had given them unless they commit a proven adultery and live with them in kindness. If you dislike them, it may be that you dislike something in which God has placed much good. If you wish to replace one wife with another and you have given one of them a fortune, take nothing back from it. Would you take it back fraudulently and sinfully? And how can you take it back when you have been intimate with one another and they have received from you a solid commitment? Do not marry women whom your fathers married, except what is already past. That is improper, indecent, and a bad custom. Forbidden for you are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your paternal aunts, your maternal aunts, your brother's daughters, your sister's daughters, your foster mothers who nursed you, your sisters through nursing, your wives' mothers, and your stepdaughters in your guardianship, born of wives you have gone into. But if you have not gone into them, there is no blame on you. And the wives of your genetic sons, and marrying two sisters simultaneously, except what is past. God is oft forgiving, most merciful. And all married women, except those you rightfully possess. This is God's decree, binding upon you. Permitted for you are those that lie outside these limits, provided you seek them in legal marriage, with gifts from your property, seeking wedlock, not prostitution. If you wish to enjoy them, then give them their dowry, a legal obligation. You commit no error by agreeing to any change to the dowry. God is all-knowing, most wise. If any of you lack the means to marry free believing women, he may marry one of the believing maids under your control. God is well aware of your faith. You are from one another. Marry them with the permission of their guardians and give them their recompense fairly to be protected, neither committing adultery nor taking secret lovers. When they are married, if they commit adultery, their punishment shall be half that of free women. That is for those among you who fear falling into decadence, but to practice self-restraint is better for you. God is most forgiving, most merciful. God intends to make things clear to you and to guide you in the ways of those before you and to redeem you. God is most knowing, most wise. God intends to redeem you, but those who follow their desires want you to turn away utterly. God intends to lighten your burden, for the human being was created weak. O you who believe, do not consume each other's wealth illicitly, but trade by mutual consent. And do not kill yourselves, for God is merciful towards you. Whoever does that out of hostility and wrongdoing, we will cast him into a fire, and that would be easy for God. If you avoid the worst of what you are forbidden, we will remit your sins and admit you by a gate of honor. Do not covet what God has given to some of you in preference to others, for men is a share of what they have earned, and for women is a share of what they have earned, and ask God of his bounty. God has knowledge of everything. To everyone we have assigned beneficiaries in what is left by parents and relatives. Those with whom you have made an agreement, give them their share. God is witness over all things. Men are the protectors and maintainers of women, as God has given some of them an advantage over others and because they spend out of their wealth. The good women are obedient guarding what God would have them guard. As for those from whom you fear disloyalty, admonish them and abandon them in their beds, then strike them. But if they obey you, seek no way against them. God is sublime, great. 
If you fear a breach between the two, appoint an arbiter from his family and an arbiter from her family. If they wish to reconcile, God will bring them together. God is knowledgeable, expert. Worship God and ascribe no partners to him, and be good to the parents and the relatives and the orphans and the poor and the neighbor next door and the distant neighbor and the close associate and the traveler and your servants. God does not love the arrogant show-off. Those who are stingy and exhort people to stinginess and conceal what God has given them from his bounty, we have prepared for the disbelievers a disgraceful punishment. And those who spend their money to be seen by people and believe neither in God nor in the last day. Whoever has Satan as a companion, what an evil companion. What would they have lost had they believed in God and the last day and gave out of what God has provided for them? God knows them very well. God does not commit an atom's weight of injustice, and if there is a good deed, he doubles it and gives from his presence a sublime compensation. Then how will it be when we bring a witness from every community and we bring you as a witness against these? On that day, those who disbelieved and disobeyed the messenger will wish that the earth were leveled over them. They will conceal nothing from God. O oh, you who believe, do not approach the prayer while you are drunk so that you know what you say, nor after sexual orgasm unless you are traveling until you have bathed. If you are sick or traveling or one of you comes from the toilet or you have had intercourse with women and cannot find water, find clean sand and wipe your faces and your hands with it. God is pardoning and forgiving. Have you not considered those who were given a share of the book? They buy error and wish you would lose the way. But God knows your enemies best. God is sufficient as a protector and God is sufficient as a supporter. Among the Jews are some who take words out of context and say, we hear and we disobey and hear without listening and observe us, twisting with their tongues and slandering the religion. Had they said, we hear and we obey and listen and give us your attention, it would have been better for them and more upright. But God has cursed them for their disbelief. They do not believe except a little. O oh, you who were given the book, believe in what we sent down, confirming what you have, before we obliterate faces and turn them inside out, or curse them as we curse the Sabbath breakers. The command of God is always done. God does not forgive association with him, but he forgives anything less than that to whomever he wills. Whoever associates anything with God has devised a monstrous sin. Have you not considered those who claim purity for themselves? Rather, God purifies whom he wills, and they will not be wronged a whit. See how they devise lies against God. That alone is an outright sin. Have you not considered those who are given a share of the book? They believe in superstition and evil powers, and say of those who disbelieve, these are better guided on the way than the believers. Those are they whom God has cursed. Whomever God curses, you will find no savior for him. Or do they own a share of the kingdom? Then they would not give people a speck. Or do they envy the people for what God has given them of his grace? We have given the family of Abraham the book and wisdom and we have given them a great kingdom. Among them are those who believed in it, and among them are those who held back from it. Hell is a sufficient inferno. Those who reject our revelations, we will scorch them in a fire. Every time their skins are cooked, we will replace them with other skins, so they will experience the suffering. God is most powerful, most wise. As for those who believe and do good deeds, we will admit them into gardens beneath which rivers flow, abiding therein forever. They will have purified spouses therein, and we will admit them into a shady shade. God instructs you to give back things entrusted to you to their owners, and when you judge between people, 
judge with justice. God's instructions to you are excellent. God is all hearing, all seeing. O you who believe, obey God and obey the messenger and those in authority among you. And if you dispute over anything, refer it to God and the messenger. If you believe in God and the last day, that is best and the most excellent determination. Have you not observed those who claim that they believe in what was revealed to you and in what was revealed before you, yet they seek satanic sources for legislation in spite of being commanded to reject them? Satan means to mislead them far away. And when it is said to them, come to what God has revealed and to the messenger, you see the hypocrites shunning you completely. How about when a disaster strikes them because what their hands have put forward and then they come to you swearing by God. We only intended goodwill and reconciliation. They are those whom God knows what is in their hearts. So ignore them and admonish them and say to them concerning themselves penetrating words. We did not send any messenger except to be obeyed by God's leave. Had they, when they wronged themselves, come to you and prayed for God's forgiveness, and the messenger had prayed for their forgiveness, they would have found God relenting and merciful. But no, by your Lord, they will not believe until they call you to arbitrate in their disputes and then find within themselves no resentment regarding your decisions and submit themselves completely. Had we decreed for them, kill yourselves or leave your homes, they would not have done it except for a few of them. But had they done what they were instructed to do, it would have been better for them and a firmer confirmation, and we would have given them from our presence a rich compensation, and we would have guided them on a straight path. Whoever obeys God and the messenger, these are with those whom God has blessed among the prophets and the sincere and the martyrs and the upright. Excellent are those as companions, that is the grace from God. God suffices as Noah, O oh, you who believe. Take your precautions and mobilize in groups or mobilize altogether. Among you is he who lags behind. Then when a calamity befalls you, he says, God has favored me that I was not martyred with them. But when some bounty from God comes to you, he says, as if no affection existed between you and him, if only I had been with them, I would have achieved a great victory. Let those who sell the life of this world for the hereafter fight in the cause of God. Whoever fights in the cause of God and then is killed or achieves victory, we will grant him a great compensation. And why would you not fight in the cause of God? And the helpless men and women and children cry out, Our Lord, deliver us from this town whose people are oppressive and appoint for us from your presence a protector and appoint for us from your presence a victor. Those who believe fight in the cause of God, while those who disbelieve fight in the cause of evil. So fight the allies of the devil. Surely the strategy of the devil is weak. Have you not considered those who were told, restrain your hands and perform your prayers and spend in regular charity? But when fighting was ordained for them, a faction of them feared the people as God is ought to be feared, or even more. And they said, Our Lord, why did you ordain fighting for us? If only you would postpone it for us for a short while. Say, the enjoyments of this life are brief, but the hereafter is better for the righteous, and you will not be wronged one bit. Wherever you may be, death will catch up with you, even if you were in fortified towers. When a good fortune comes their way, they say, this is from God. But when a misfortune befalls them, they say, this is from you. Say, all is from God. So what is the matter with these people that they hardly understand a thing? Whatever good happens to you is from God, and whatever bad happens to you is from your own self. We sent you to humanity as a messenger, and God is witness enough. Whoever obeys the messenger is obeying God, and whoever turns away 
We did not send you as a watcher over them. They profess obedience, but when they leave your presence, some of them conspire something contrary to what you said. But God writes down what they conspire, so avoid them and put your trust in God. God is guardian enough. Do they not ponder the Quran? Had it been from any other than God, they would have found in it much discrepancy. When some news of security or alarm comes their way, they broadcast it. But had they referred it to the messenger and to those in authority among them, those who can draw conclusions from it would have comprehended it. Were it not for God's blessing and mercy upon you, you would have followed the devil, except for a few. So fight in the cause of God. You are responsible only for yourself and rouse the believers. Perhaps God will restrain the might of those who disbelieve. God is stronger in might and more punishing. Whoever intercedes for a good cause has a share in it, and whoever intercedes for an evil cause shares in its burdens. God keeps watch over everything. When you are greeted with a greeting, respond with a better greeting or return it. God keeps count of everything. God, there is no God except He. He will gather you to the day of resurrection, in which there is no doubt. And who speaks more truly than God? What is the matter with you, divided into two factions regarding the hypocrites, when God himself has overwhelmed them on account of what they did? Do you want to guide those whom God has led astray? Whomever God leads astray, you will never find for him a way. They would love to see you disbelieve, just as they disbelieve, so you would become equal. So do not befriend any of them, unless they emigrate in the way of God. If they turn away, seize them and execute them wherever you may find them. And do not take from among them allies or supporters, except those who join people with whom you have a treaty, or those who come to you reluctant to fight you or fight their own people. Had God willed, he would have given them power over you, and they would have fought you. If they withdraw from you and do not fight you and offer you peace, then God assigns no excuse for you against them. You will find others who want security from you and security from their own people. But whenever they are tempted into civil discord, they plunge into it. So if they do not withdraw from you, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands, seize them and execute them wherever you find them. Against these, we have given you clear authorization. Never should a believer kill another believer unless by error. Anyone who kills a believer by error must set free a believing slave and pay compensation to the victim's family unless they remit it as charity. If the victim belong to a people who are hostile to you but is a believer, then the compensation is to free a believing slave. If he belonged to a people with whom you have a treaty, then compensation should be handed over to his family and a believing slave set free. Anyone who lacks the means must fast for two consecutive months by way of repentance to God. God is all-knowing, most wise. Whoever kills a believer deliberately, the penalty for him is hell, where he will remain forever. And God will be angry with him and will curse him and will prepare for him a terrible punishment. O oh, you who believe, when you journey in the way of God, investigate and do not say to him who offers you peace, you are not a believer, aspiring for the goods of this world. With God are abundant riches. You yourselves were like this before, and God bestowed favor on you. So investigate. God is well aware of what you do. Not equal are the inactive among the believers, except the disabled and the strivers in the cause of God with their possessions and their persons. God prefers the strivers with their possessions and their persons above the inactive by a degree. But God has promised goodness to both, yet God favors the strivers over the inactive with a great reward. Degrees from him and forgiveness and mercy. God is forgiving and merciful. 
While the angels are removing the souls of those who have wronged themselves, they will say, what was the matter with you? They will say, we were oppressed in the land. They will say, was God's earth not vast enough for you to emigrate in it? These, their refuge is hell. What a wretched retreat. Except for the weak among men, and women and children who have no means to act, and no means to find a way out. These, God may well pardon them. God is pardoning and forgiving. Anyone who emigrates for the sake of God will find on earth many places of refuge and plentitude. Anyone who leaves his home emigrating to God and his messenger and then is overtaken by death, his compensation falls on God. God is forgiver, most merciful. When you travel in the land, there is no blame on you for shortening the prayers if you fear that the disbelievers may harm you. The disbelievers are your manifest enemies. When you are among them and you stand to lead them in prayer, let a group of them stand with you and let them hold their weapons. Then, when they have done their prostrations, let them withdraw to the rear and let another group that have not prayed yet come forward and pray with you and let them take their precautions and their weapons. Those who disbelieve would like you to neglect your weapons and your equipment so they can attack you in a single assault. You commit no error if you are hampered by rain or are sick by putting down your weapons, but take precautions. Indeed, God has prepared for the disbelievers a demeaning punishment. When you have completed the prayer, remember God standing or sitting or on your sides. And when you feel secure, perform the prayer. The prayer is obligatory for believers at specific times and do not falter in the pursuit of the enemy. If you are aching, they are aching as you are aching, but you expect from God what they cannot expect. God is knowledgeable and wise. We have revealed to you the scripture with the truth so that you judge between people in accordance with what God has shown you and do not be an advocate for the traitors and ask God for forgiveness. God is forgiver and merciful and do not argue on behalf of those who deceive themselves. God does not love the deceitful sinner. They hide from the people but they cannot hide from God. He is with them as they plot by night with words he does not approve. God comprehends what they do. There you are arguing on their behalf in the present life, but who will argue with God on their behalf on the day of resurrection? Or who will be their representative? Whoever commits evil or wrongs his soul, then implores God for forgiveness, will find God forgiving and merciful. And whoever earns a sin, earns it against himself. God is aware and wise. And whoever commits a mistake or a sin and then blames it on an innocent person has taken a slander and a clear sin. Were it not for God's grace towards you and his mercy, a faction of them would have managed to mislead you. But they only mislead themselves and they cannot harm you in any way. God has revealed to you the scripture and wisdom and has taught you what you did not know. God's goodness towards you is great. There is no good in much of their private counsels except for him who advocates charity or kindness or reconciliation between people. Whoever does that, seeking God's approval, we will give him a great compensation. Whoever makes a breach with the messenger after the guidance has become clear to him and follows other than the path of the believers, we will direct him in the direction he has chosen and commit him to hell. What a terrible destination. God will not forgive that partners be associated with him, but will forgive anything less than that to whomever he wills. Anyone who ascribes partners to God has strayed into far error. They invoke in his stead only females. In fact, they invoke none but a rebellious devil. God has cursed him, and he said, I will take to myself my due share of your servants. 
and I will mislead them, and I will entice them, and I will prompt them to slit the ears of cattle, and I will prompt them to alter the creation of God. Whoever takes Satan as a lord instead of God has surely suffered a profound loss. He promises them, and he raises their expectations, but Satan promises them nothing but delusions. These, their place is hell, and they will find no escape from it. But as for those who believe and do righteous deeds, we will admit them into gardens beneath which rivers flow, where they will abide forever. The promise of God is true, and who is more truthful in speech than God? It is not in accordance with your wishes, nor in accordance with the wishes of the people of the Scripture. Whoever works evil will pay for it, and will not find for himself besides God any protector or saviour. But whoever works righteousness, whether male or female, and is a believer, those will enter paradise and will not be wronged a whit. And who is better in religion than he who submits himself wholly to God and is a doer of good and follows the faith of Abraham the monotheist? God has chosen Abraham for a friend. To God belongs what is in the heavens and what is on earth, and God encompasses everything. They ask you for a ruling about women. Say, God gives you a ruling about them, and so does what is stated to you in the book about widowed women, from whom you withhold what is decreed for them, yet you desire to marry them, and about helpless children, that you should treat the orphans fairly. Whatever good you do, God knows it. If a woman fears maltreatment or desertion from her husband, there is no fault in them if they reconcile their differences, for reconciliation is best. Souls are prone to avarice. Yet if you do what is good and practice piety, God is cognizant of what you do. You will not be able to treat women with equal fairness, no matter how much you desire it. But do not be so biased as to leave another suspended. If you make amends and act righteously, God is forgiving and merciful. And if they separate, God will enrich each from his abundance. God is bounteous and wise. To God belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. We have instructed those who were given the book before you and you to be conscious of God. But if you refuse, to God belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. God is in no need, praiseworthy. To God belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. God suffices as manager. If he wills, he can do away with you, O people, and bring others. God is able to do that. Whoever desires the reward of this world with God is the reward of this world and the next. God is all hearing, all seeing. O oh, you who believe, stand firmly for justice as witnesses to God, even if against yourselves or your parents or your relatives, whether one is rich or poor, God takes care of both. So do not follow your desires, lest you swerve. If you deviate or turn away, then God is aware of what you do. O oh, you who believe, Believe in God and his messenger, and the book he sent down to his messenger, and the book he sent down before. Whoever rejects God, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, has strayed far in error. Those who believe, then disbelieve, then believe, then disbelieve, then increase in disbelief. God will not forgive them, nor will he guide them to a way. Inform the hypocrites that they will have a painful punishment. Those who ally themselves with the disbelievers instead of the believers. Do they seek glory in them? All glory belongs to God. He has revealed to you in the book that when you hear God's revelations being rejected or ridiculed, do not sit with them until they engage in some other subject. Otherwise, you would be like them. God will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers into hell altogether, those who lie in wait for you. If you attain victory from God, they say, were we not with you? But if the disbelievers get a turn, they say, did we not side with you? and defend you from the believers. God will judge 
between you on the day of resurrection, and God will give the disbelievers no means of overcoming the believers. The hypocrites try to deceive God, but he is deceiving them. And when they stand for prayer, they stand lazily, showing off in front of people and remembering God only a little. Severing in between, neither with these nor with those. Whomever God sends astray, you will never find for him a way. O oh, you who believe, do not befriend disbelievers rather than believers. Do you want to give God a clear case against you? The hypocrites will be in the lowest level of the fire and you will find no helper for them. Except those who repent and reform and hold fast to God and dedicate their religion to God alone. These are with the believers and God will give the believers a great reward. What would God accomplish by your punishment if you have given thanks and have believed? God is appreciative and cognizant. God does not like the public uttering of bad language unless someone was wronged. God is hearing and knowing. If you let a good deed be shown or conceal it or pardon an offense, God is pardoning and capable. Those who disbelieve in God and his messengers and want to separate between God and his messengers and say, we believe in some and reject some and wish to take a path in between. These are the unbelievers, truly. We have prepared for the unbelievers a shameful punishment. As for those who believe in God and his messengers and make no distinction between any of them, he will give them their rewards. God is forgiver and merciful. The people of the scripture challenge you to bring down to them a book from the sky. They had asked Moses for something even greater. They said, show us God plainly. The thunderbolt struck them for their wickedness. Then they took the calf for worship, even after the clear proofs had come to them. Yet we pardoned that, and we gave Moses a clear authority. And we raised the mount above them in accordance with their covenant. And we said to them, enter the gate humbly. And we said to them, do not violate the Sabbath and we received from them a solemn pledge. But for their violation of their covenant and their denial of God's revelations and their killing of the prophets unjustly and their saying, our minds are closed. In fact, God has sealed them for their disbelief so they do not believe except for a few and for their faithlessness and their saying against Mary a monstrous slander and for their saying, we have killed the Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God. In fact, they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it appeared to them as if they did. Indeed, those who differ about him are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it, except the following of assumptions. Certainly they did not kill him. Rather, God raised him up to himself. God is mighty and wise. There is none from the people of the scripture but will believe in him before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be a witness against them. Due to wrongdoing on the part of the Jews, we forbade them good things that used to be lawful for them and for deterring many from God's path and for their taking usury, although they were forbidden it, and for their consuming people's wealth dishonestly. We have prepared for the faithless among them a painful torment. But those among them firmly rooted in knowledge, and the believers believe in what was revealed to you, and in what was revealed before you, and the observers of prayers, and the givers of charity, and the believers in God, and the last day. Upon these, we will bestow an immense reward. We have inspired you as we had inspired Noah and the prophets after him, and we inspired Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the patriarchs and Jesus and Job and Jonah and Aaron and Solomon. And we gave David the Psalms, some messengers we have already told you about, while some messengers we have not told you about. And God spoke to Moses directly. 
messengers delivering good news and bringing warnings, so that people may have no excuse before God after the coming of the messengers. God is powerful and wise, but God bears witness to what he revealed to you. He revealed it with his knowledge, and the angels bear witness, though God is a sufficient witness. Those who disbelieve and repel from God's path have gone far astray. Those who disbelieve and transgress, God is not about to forgive them, nor will he guide them to any path, except to the path of hell, where they will dwell forever. And that is easy for God. O oh people, the messenger has come to you with the truth from your Lord, so believe that is best for you. But if you disbelieve, to God belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. God is omniscient and wise. O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion and do not say about God except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, is the messenger of God and his word that he conveyed to Mary and a spirit from him. So believe in God and his messengers and do not say three. Refrain, it is better for you. God is only one God. Glory be to him that he should have a son. To him belongs everything in the heavens and the earth, and God is a sufficient protector. The Messiah does not disdain to be a servant of God, nor do the favored angels. Whoever disdains his worship and is too arrogant, he will round them up to himself altogether. But as for those who believe and do good works, he will pay them their wages in full and will increase his grace for them. But as for those who disdain and are too proud, he will punish them with an agonizing punishment and they will find for themselves, apart from God, no Lord and no Savior. O oh people, a proof has come to you from your Lord and we sent down to you a clear light. As for those who believe in God and hold fast to him, he will admit them into mercy and grace from him and will guide them to himself in a straight path. They ask you for a ruling, say, God gives you a ruling concerning the person who has neither parents nor children. If a man dies and leaves no children and he had a sister, she receives one half of what he leaves and he inherits from her if she leaves no children but if there are two sisters, they receive two thirds of what he leaves. If the siblings are men and women, the male receives the share of two females. God makes things clear for you lest you err. God is aware of everything. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. O oh, you who believe, fulfill your commitments. Livestock animals are permitted for you, except those specified to you, but not wild game while you are in pilgrim sanctity. God decrees whatever he wills. O oh, you who believe, do not violate God's sacraments, nor the sacred month, nor the offerings, nor the garlanded, nor those heading for the sacred house, seeking blessings from their Lord and approval. When you have left the pilgrim's sanctity, you may hunt and let not the hatred of people who barred you from the sacred mosque incite you to aggression and cooperate with one another in virtuous conduct and conscience and do not cooperate with one another in sin and hostility and fear God. God is severe in punishment. Prohibited for you are carrion blood, the flesh of swine and animals dedicated to other than God. Also, the flesh of animals strangled, killed violently, killed by a fall, gored to death, mangled by wild animals. Except what you rescue, and animals sacrificed on altars, and the practice of drawing lots, for it is immoral. Today, those who disbelieve have despaired of your religion, so do not fear them, but fear me. Today, I have perfected your religion for you and have completed my favor upon you and have approved Islam as a religion for you. But whoever is compelled by hunger with no intent of wrongdoing, God is forgiving and merciful. They ask you what is permitted for them. Say, 
Permitted for you are all good things, including what trained dogs and falcons catch for you. You train them according to what God has taught you. So eat from what they catch for you and pronounce God's name over it and fear God. God is swift in reckoning. Uh, today all good things are made lawful for you and the food of those given the scripture is lawful for you and your food is lawful for them. So are chaste believing women and chaste women from the people who were given the scripture before you provided you give them their dowries and take them in marriage, not in adultery, nor as mistresses. But whoever rejects faith, his work will be in vain, and in the hereafter he will be among the losers. O oh, you who believe, when you rise to pray, wash your faces and your hands and arms to the elbows, and wipe your heads and your feet to the ankles. If you had intercourse, then purify yourselves. If you are ill or traveling, or one of you returns from the toilet, or you had contact with women and could not find water, then use some clean sand and wipe your faces and hands with it. God does not intend to burden you, but he intends to purify you and to complete his blessing upon you, that you may be thankful. And remember God's blessings upon you and his covenant, which he covenanted with you. When you said, we hear and we obey and remain conscious of God, for God knows what the hearts contain, O oh, you who believe. Be upright to God, witnessing with justice, and let not the hatred of a certain people prevent you from acting justly. Adhere to justice, for that is nearer to piety, and fear God. God is informed of what you do. God has promised those who believe and work righteousness. They will have forgiveness and a great reward. As for those who disbelieve and reject our revelations, these are the inmates of hell. O oh, yo, you who believe, remember God's blessings upon you when certain people intended to extend their hands against you, and he restrained their hands from you. So reverence God, and in God let the believers put their trust. God received a pledge from the children of Israel, and we raised among them twelve chiefs. God said, I am with you. If you perform the prayer, and pay the arms, and believe in my messengers, and support them. And lend God alone of righteousness, I will remit your sins and admit you into gardens beneath which rivers flow. But whoever among you disbelieves afterwards has strayed from the right way. Because of their breaking their pledge, we cursed them and made their hearts hard. They twist the words out of their context, and they disregarded some of what they were reminded of. You will always witness deceit from them, except for a few of them, but pardon them and overlook. God loves the doers of good. And from those who say, we are Christians, we see we received their pledge, but they neglected some of what they were reminded of. So we provoked enmity and hatred among them until the day of resurrection. God will then inform them of what they used to craft. O oh, people of the book, our messenger has come to you, clarifying for you much of what you kept hidden of the book and overlooking much. A light from God has come to you, and a clear book. God guides with it whoever follows his approval to the ways of peace, and he brings them out of darkness into light by his permission, and he guides them in a straight path. They disbelieve those who say, God is the Christ the son of Mary. Say, who can prevent God, if he willed, from annihilating the Christ, son of Mary, and his mother, and everyone on earth? To God belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth and what is between them. He creates whatever he wills, and God has power over everything. The Jews and the Christians say, we are the children of God and his beloved. Say, why then does he punish you for your sins? In fact, you are humans from among those he created. He forgives whom he wills, and he punishes whom he wills. To God belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and what lies between them, and to him is the return. O people of the book, 
Our messenger has come to you, making things clear to you after a cessation of messengers so that you cannot say, no preacher has come to us and no warner. In fact, a preacher has come to you and a warner and God is capable of everything. When Moses said to his people, O oh, my people, remember God's blessings upon you when he placed prophets among you and made you kings and gave you what he never gave any other people. O oh, my people, enter the holy land which God has assigned for you and do not turn back lest you return as losers. They said, O oh, Moses, there are tyrannical people in it. We will not enter it until they leave it. If they leave it, we will be entering. Two men of those who feared, but whom God had blessed, said, Go at them by the gate, and when you have entered it, you will prevail, and put your trust in God, if you are believers. They said, O oh Moses, we will not enter it ever as long as they are in it, so go ahead, you and your Lord, and fight. We are staying right here. He said, my Lord, I have control only over myself and my brother. So separate between us and between the wicked people. He said, it is forbidden for them for 40 years. They will wander aimlessly in the land. So do not grieve over the defiant people and relate to them the true story of Adam's two sons when they offered an offering and it was accepted from one of them but it was not accepted from the other. He said, I will kill you. He said, God accepts only if you extend your hand to kill me. I will not extend my hand to kill you, for I fear God, Lord of the worlds. I would rather you bear my sin and your sin and you become among the inmates of the fire. Such is the reward for the evildoers. Then his soul prompted him to kill his brother, so he killed him and became one of the losers. Then God sent a raven digging the ground to show him how to cover his brother's corpse. He said, woe to me. I was unable to be like this raven and bury my brother's corpse. So he became full of regrets. Because of that, we ordained for the children of Israel that whoever kills a person unless it is for murder or corruption on earth. It is as if he killed the whole of mankind, and whoever saves it, it is as if he saved the whole of mankind. Our messengers came to them with clarifications, but even after that, many of them continue to commit excesses in the land. The punishment for those who fight God and his messenger and strive to spread corruption on earth is that they be killed or crucified or have their hands and feet cut off on opposite sides, or be banished from the land. That is to disgrace them in this life. And in the hereafter, they will have a terrible punishment. Except for those who repent before you apprehend them. So, know that God is forgiving and merciful. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of God and seek the means of approach to him and strive in his cause so that you may succeed. As for those who disbelieve, even if they owned everything on earth and the like of it with it, and they offered it to ransom themselves from the torment of the day of resurrection, it will not be accepted from them. For them is a painful punishment. They will want to leave the fire, but they will not leave it. For them is a lasting punishment. As for the thief, whether male or female, cut their hands as a penalty for what they have reaped, a deterrent from God. God is mighty and wise, but whoever repents after his crime and reforms, God will accept his repentance. God is forgiving and merciful. Do you not know that to God belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth? He punishes whom he wills and he forgives whom he wills and God is capable of everything. O messenger, do not let those who are quick to disbelief grieve you. From among those who say with their mouths, we believe, but their hearts do not believe. And from among the Jews, 
Listeners to lies, listeners to other people who did not come to you. They distort words from their places. And they say, if you are given this, accept it. But if you are not given it, beware. Whomever God has willed to divert, you have nothing for him from God. Those are they whose hearts God does not intend to purify. For them is disgrace in this world, and for them is a great punishment in the hereafter. Listeners to falsehoods, eaters of illicit earnings, if they come to you, judge between them, or turn away from them. If you turn away from them, they will not harm you in the least. But if you judge, judge between them equitably. God loves the equitable. But why do they come to you for judgment when they have the Torah in which is God's law? Yet they turn away after that. These are not believers. We uh, have revealed the Torah, wherein is guidance and light. The submissive prophets ruled the Jews according to it. So did the rabbis and the scholars, as they were required to protect God's book and were witnesses to it. So. Do not fear people, but fear me. And do not sell my revelations for a cheap price. Those who do not rule according to what God revealed are the unbelievers. And we wrote for them in it, a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth, and an equal wound for a wound. But whoever forgoes it in charity, it will serve as atonement for him. Those who do not rule according to what God revealed are the evildoers. In their footsteps, we sent Jesus, son of Mary, fulfilling the Torah that preceded him, and we gave him the gospel, wherein is guidance and light, and confirming the Torah that preceded him, and guidance and counsel for the righteous. So let the people of the gospel rule according to what God revealed in it. Those who do not rule according to what God revealed are the sinners. And we reveal to you the book with truth, confirming the scripture that preceded it and superseding it. So judge between them according to what God revealed and do not follow their desires if they differ from the truth that has come to you. For each of you we have assigned a law and a method. Had God willed, he could have made you a single nation, but he tests you through what he has given you. So compete in righteousness. To God is your return, all of you. Then he will inform you of what you had disputed and judge between them according to what God revealed and do not follow their desires and beware of them, lest they lure you away from some of what God has revealed to you. But if they turn away, know that God intends to strike them with some of their sins. In fact, a great many people are corrupt. Is it the laws of the time of ignorance that they desire? Who is better than God in judgment for people who are certain? O oh, you who believe, do not take the Jews and the Christians as allies. Some of them are allies of one another. Whoever of you allies himself with them is one of them. God does not guide the wrongdoing people. You will see those in whose hearts is sickness racing towards them. They say, we fear the wheel of fate may turn against us, but perhaps God will bring about victory or some event of his making. Thereupon, they will regret what they concealed within themselves. Those who believe will say, are these the ones who swore by God with their strongest oaths? that they are with you. Their works have failed, so they became losers. O oh, you who believe, whoever of you goes back on his religion, God will bring a people whom he loves and who love him, kind towards the believers, stern with the disbelievers. They strive in the way of God and do not fear the blame of the critic. That is the grace of God. He bestows it upon whomever he wills. God is embracing and knowing. Your allies are God and his messenger. And those who believe, those who pray regularly and give charity while bowing down. Whoever allies himself with God and his messenger and those who believe 
Surely the party of God is the victorious. O oh, you who believe, do not befriend those who take your religion in mockery and as a sport, be they from among those who were given the scripture before you or the disbelievers, and obey God if you are believers. When you call to the prayer, they take it as a joke and a trifle. That is because they are people who do not reason. Say, O oh people of the scripture, do you resent us only because we believe in God and in what was revealed to us and in what was revealed previously, and most of you are sinners? Say, shall I inform you of worse than that for retribution from God? He whom God has cursed and with whom he became angry, and he turned some of them into apes and swine and idol worshippers. These are in a worse position and further away from the right way. When they come to you, they say, we believe, though they have entered with disbelief and they have departed with it. But God is well aware of what they hide. You see many of them competing with one another in sin and hostility and their consuming of what is illicit. What they have been doing is truly evil. Why do the rabbis and the priests not prevent them from speaking sinfully and from consuming forbidden wealth? Evil is what they have been doing. The Jews say, God's hand is tied. It is their hands that are tied, and they are cursed for what they say. In fact, his hands are outstretched. He gives as he wills. Certainly, what was revealed to you from your Lord will increase many of them in defiance and blasphemy, and we place between them enmity and hatred until the day of resurrection. Whenever they kindle the fire of war, God extinguishes it, and they strive to spread corruption on earth. God does not love the corruptors. Had the people of the scripture believed and been righteous, we would have remitted their sins and admitted them into the gardens of bliss. Had they observed the Torah and the gospel and what was revealed to them from their Lord, they would have consumed amply from above them and from beneath their feet. Among them is a moderate community, but evil is what many of them are doing. O oh, messenger, convey what was revealed to you from your Lord. But if you do not, then you would not have delivered his message, and God will protect you from the people. God does not guide the disbelieving people. Say, O oh, people of the scripture, you have no basis until you uphold the Torah and the gospel and what is revealed to you from your Lord. But what is revealed to you from your Lord will increase many of them in rebellion and disbelief. So do not be sorry for the disbelieving people. Those who believe, and the Jews, and the Sabians, and the Christians, whoever believes in God and the last day and does what is right, they have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. We made a covenant with the children of Israel, and we sent to them messengers. Whenever a messenger came to them with what their souls did not desire, some of them they accused of lying, and others they put to death. They assumed there would be no punishment, so they turned blind and deaf. Then God redeemed them, but then again many of them turned blind and deaf. But God is seeing of what they do. They disbelieve those who say God is the Messiah, the son of Mary. But the Messiah himself said, O children of Israel, worship God, my Lord and your Lord. Whoever associates others with God, God has forbidden him paradise, and his dwelling is the fire. The wrongdoers have no saviors. They disbelieve those who say God is the third of three, but there is no deity except the one God. If they do not refrain from what they say, a painful torment will befall those among them who disbelieve. Will they not repent to God and ask his forgiveness? God is forgiving and merciful. The Messiah, son of Mary, was only a messenger before whom other messengers had passed away, and his mother was a woman of truth. They both used to eat food, 
Note how we make clear the revelations to them, then note how deluded they are, and say, do you worship besides God, what has no power to harm or benefit you? But God, he is the hearer, the knower. Say, O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion beyond the truth, and do not follow the opinions of people who went astray before and misled many, and themselves strayed off the balanced way. Cursed were those who disbelieved from among the children of Israel by the Tongu of David and Jesus' son of Mary. That is because they rebelled and used to transgress. They used not to prevent one another from the wrongs they used to commit. Evil is what they used to do. You will see many of them befriending those who disbelieve. Terrible is what their souls prompts them to do. The wrath of God fell upon them, and in the torment they will remain. Had they believed in God and the prophet and in what was revealed to him, they would not have befriended them. But many of them are immoral. You will find that the people most hostile towards the believers are the Jews and the polytheists. And you will find that the nearest in affection towards the believers are those who say, we are Christians. That is because among them are priests and monks and they are not arrogant. And when they hear what was revealed to the messenger, you see their eyes overflowing with tears as they recognize the truth in it. They say, our Lord, we have believed. So count us among the witnesses. And why should we not believe in God and in the truth that has come to us and hope that our Lord will include us among the righteous people? God will reward them for what they say, gardens beneath which rivers flow, where they will stay forever. Such is the reward of the righteous. But as for those who disbelieve and deny our signs, these are the inmates of the fire. O oh, you who believe, do not prohibit the good things God has permitted for you, and do not commit aggression. God does not love the aggressors. And eat of the lawful and good things God has provided for you, and be conscious of God, in whom you are believers. God does not hold you accountable for your unintended oaths, but he holds you accountable for your binding oaths. The atonement for it is by feeding ten needy people from the average of what you feed your families, or by clothing them, or by freeing a slave. Anyone who lacks the means shall fast for three days. That is the atonement for breaking your oaths when you have sworn them, so keep your oaths. Thus God makes clear his revelations to you that you may be grateful, O you who believe. Intoxicants, gambling, idolatry, and divination are abominations of Satan's doing. Avoid them so that you may prosper. Satan wants to provoke strife and hatred among you through intoxicants and gambling and to prevent you from the remembrance of God and from prayer. Will you not desist? Obey God and obey the messenger and be cautious if you turn away Know that the duty of our messenger is clear communication. Those who believe and do righteous deeds will not be blamed for what they may have eaten, provided they obey and believe and do good deeds. Then maintain piety and faith. Then remain righteous and charitable. God loves the charitable. O oh, you who believe, God will test you with something of the game your hands and spears obtain that God may know who fears him at heart. Whoever commits aggression after that will have a painful punishment. So you who believe, do not kill game whilst you are in pilgrim sanctity. Whoever of you kills any intentionally, its penalty shall be a domestic animal comparable to what he killed, as determined by two honest persons among you, an offering delivered to the Kaaba, or he may atone by feeding the needy, or its equivalent in fasting, so that he may taste the consequences of his conduct. God forgives what is past, but whoever repeats, God will take revenge on him. God is almighty avenger. Permitted for you is the catch of sea and its food, a sustenance for you and for travelers, but forbidden for you is the game of land while you are in pilgrim sanctity, and fear God, 
to whom you will be gathered. God has appointed the Kaaba, the sacred house, a sanctuary for the people, and the sacred month, and the offerings, and the garlanded, that you may know that God knows everything in the heavens and the earth, and that God is cognizant of all things. Know that God is severe in retribution, and that God is forgiving and merciful. The messenger's sole duty is to convey. God knows what you reveal and what you conceal. Say, the bad and the good are not equal, even though the abundance of the bad may impress you. So be conscious of God, O oh, you who possess intelligence, that you may succeed. O oh, you who believe, do not ask about things that would trouble you if disclosed to you. But if you were to ask about them while the Quran is being revealed, they will become obvious to you. God forgives that. God is forgiving and clement. A people before you asked about them, but then came to reject them. God did not institute the superstitions of Bahira, Saiba, Wasila, or of Hami. But those who disbelieve fabricate lies about God. Most of them do not understand. And when it is said to them, come to what God has revealed, and to the messenger they say, sufficient for us is what we found our forefathers upon, even if their forefathers knew nothing and were not guided. Or you who believe you are responsible for your own souls. He who has strayed cannot harm you if you are guided. To God is your return, all of you, and he will inform you of what you used to do. O oh, you who believe, when death approaches one of you, let two reliable persons from among you act as witnesses to the making of a bequest, or two persons from another people if you are traveling in the land and the event of death approaches you. Engage them after the prayer. If you have doubts, let them swear by God. We will not sell our testimony for any price, even if he was a near relative, and we will not conceal God's testimony, for then we would be sinners. If it is discovered that they are guilty of perjury, let two others take their place, two from among those responsible for the claim, and have them swear by God, our testimony is more truthful than their testimony, and we will not be biased, for then we would be wrongdoers. That makes it more likely that they will give true testimony, fearing that their oaths might be contradicted by subsequent oaths. So fear God and listen. God does not guide the disobedient people. On the day when God will gather the messengers, then say, what response were you given? They will say, we have no knowledge. It is you who are the knower of the unseen. When God will say, O Jesus, son of Mary, recall my favor upon you and upon your mother, how I supported you with the Holy Spirit. You spoke to the people from the crib and in maturity, how I taught you the scripture and wisdom and the Torah and the gospel, and recall that you molded from clay the shape of a bird by my leave, and then you breathed into it, and it became a bird by my leave and you healed the blind and the leprous by my leave, and you revived the dead by my leave, and recall that I restrained the children of Israel from you when you brought them the clear miracles. But those who disbelieved among them said, this is nothing but obviously. And when I inspired the disciples, believe in me and in my messenger, they said, we have believed, so bear witness that we have submitted. And when the disciples said, O oh, Jesus, son of Mary, is your Lord able to bring down for us a feast from heaven? He said, fear God, if you are believers. They said, we wish to eat from it so that our hearts may be reassured and know that you have told us the truth and be among those who witness it. Jesus, son of Mary said, O oh God, our Lord, Send down for us a table from heaven to be a festival for us, for the first of us and the last of us, and a sign from you and provide for us. You are the best of providers. God said, 
I will send it down to you. But whoever among you disbelieves thereafter, I will punish him with a punishment the like of which I never punish any other being. And God will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as gods rather than God? He will say, glory be to you. It is not for me to say what I have no right to. Had I said it, you would have known it. You know what is in my soul, and I do not know what is in your soul. You are the knower of the hidden. I only told them what you commanded me, that you shall worship God, my Lord, and your Lord. And I was a witness over them while I was among them, but when you took me to yourself, you became the watcher over them. You are witness over everything. If you punish them, they are your servants, but if you forgive them, you are the mighty and wise. God will say this is a day when the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. They will have gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will remain forever. God is pleased with them, and they are pleased with him. That is the great attainment. To God belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth and what lies in them, and he has power over everything. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. Praise be to God, who created the heavens and the earth, and made the darkness and the light. Yet those who disbelieve ascribe equals to their Lord. It is he who created you from clay, then decided a term, a term determined by him. Yet you doubt. He is God in the heavens and the earth. He knows what you keep secret and what you make public, and he knows what you earn. Not one of their Lord's signs comes to them, but they turn away from it. They denied the truth when it has come to them, but soon will reach them the news of what they used to ridicule. Have they not considered how many generations we destroyed before them? We had established them on earth more firmly than we established you, and we sent the clouds pouring down abundant rain on them, and we made rivers flow beneath them, but we destroyed them for their sins and established other civilizations after them. Had we sent down upon you a book on paper, and they had touched it with their hands, those who disbelieved would have said, this is nothing but plain magic. And they say, why was an angel not sent down to him? Had we sent down an angel, the matter would have been settled, and they would not have been reprieved. Had we made him an angel, we would have made him a man and confused them when they are already confused. Messengers before you were ridiculed, but those who mocked them became besieged by what they ridiculed. Say, travel the earth and observe the final fate of the deniers. Say, to whom belongs what is in the heavens and the earth? Say, to God. He has inscribed for himself mercy. He will gather you to the day of resurrection in which there is no doubt. Those who lost their souls do not believe. To him belongs whatever rests in the night and the day. He is the hearing, the knowing. Say, shall I take for myself a protector other than God, originator of the heavens and the earth, and he feeds and is not fed? Say, I am instructed to be the first of those who submit, and do not be among the idolaters. Say, I fear, should I defy my Lord, the punishment of a tremendous day? Whoever is spared on that day, he had mercy on him. That is the clear victory. If God touches you with adversity, none can remove it except he. And if he touches you with good, he is capable of everything. He is the supreme over his servants. He is the wise, the expert. Say, what thing is more solemn in testimony? Say, God is witness between you and me. This Quran was revealed to me that I may warn you with it and whomever it may reach. Do you indeed testify that there are other gods with God? Say, I myself do not testify. Say, he is but one God 
and I am innocent of your idolatry. Those to whom we have given the book recognize it as they recognize their own children, but those who have lost their souls do not believe. Who does greater wrong than someone who fabricates lies against God or denies his revelations? The wrongdoers will not succeed. On the day when we gather them all together, then say to the idolaters, where are your idols, those you used to claim? Then their only argument will be to say, by God our Lord, we were not idolaters. Look how they lied to themselves, and what they invented deserted them. Among them are those who listen to you, but we place covers over their hearts to prevent them from understanding it and heaviness in their ears. Even if they see every sign, they will not believe in it. Until, when they come to you to argue with you, those who disbelieve will say, these are nothing but myths of the ancients. They keep others from it and avoid it themselves, but they ruin only their own souls, and they do not realize. If only you could see when they are made to stand before the fire, they will say, if only we could be sent back and not reject the revelations of our Lord and be among the faithful. What they used to conceal before will become clear to them, and even if they were sent back, they would revert to what they were forbidden. They are liars, and they say there is nothing but our life in this world, and we will not be resurrected. If only you could see when they are stationed before their Lord. He will say, is this not real? They will say, yes, indeed, by our Lord. He will say, then taste the torment for having disbelieved. Losers are those who deny the encounter with God. Then, when the hour comes upon them suddenly, they will say, alas for us, how we have neglected it. And they will carry their burdens on their backs. Evil is what they carry. The life of this world is nothing but game and distraction, but the home of the hereafter is better for those who are righteous. Do you not understand? We know that what they say grieves you. It is not you they reject, but it is God's revelations that the wicked deny. Other messengers before you were rejected, but they endured rejection and persecution until our help came to them. There can be no change to God's words. News of the messengers has already reached you. If you find their rejection hard to bear, then if you can, seek a tunnel into the earth or a stairway into the heaven and bring them a sign. Had God willed, he could have gathered them to guidance. So. Do not be of the ignorant. Only those who listen will respond. As for the dead, God will resurrect them. Then to him they will be returned. And they say, if only a sign could come down to him from his Lord. Say, God is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know. There is no animal on land, nor a bird flying with its wings, but are communities like you. We neglected nothing in the scripture. Then, to their Lord, they will be gathered. Those who reject our revelations are deaf and dumb, in total darkness. Whomever God wills, he leaves astray, and whomever he wills, he sets on a straight path. Say, have you considered? If God's punishment came upon you, or the hour overtook you, would you call upon any other than God, if you are sincere? In fact, it is Him you will call upon. And if He wills, He will remove what you called Him for, and you will forget what you idolized. We sent messengers to communities before you, and we afflicted them with suffering and hardship, that they may humble themselves if only when our calamity came upon them, they humbled themselves, but their hearts hardened, and Satan made their deeds appear good to them. Then, when they disregarded what they were remitted of, we opened for them the gates of all things. 
until, when they delighted in what they were given, we seized them suddenly, and at once they were in despair. Thus the last remnant of the people who did wrong was cut off, and praise be to God, Lord of the worlds. Say, have you considered, if God took away your hearing and your sight and set a seal on your hearts, what God other than God would restore them to you? Note how we explain the revelations in various ways, yet they still turn away. Say, have you considered, if God's punishment descended on you suddenly or gradually, would any be destroyed except the wrongdoing people? We sent the messengers only as bearers of good news and as warners. Those who believe and reform have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. But as for those who reject our revelations, torment will afflict them because of their defiance. Say, I do not say to you that I possess the treasuries of God, nor do I know the future, nor do I say to you that I am an angel. I only follow what is inspired to me. Say, are the blind and the seeing alike? Do you not think? And warn with it those who fear to be gathered before their Lord. They have no protector or intercessor apart from him. Perhaps they will grow in piety and do not drive away those who call upon their Lord, morning and evening seeking his attention. You are not accountable for them in any way, nor are they accountable for you in any way. If you drive them away, you would be one of the unjust. Thus, we try some of them by means of others, that they may say, Are these the ones whom God has favored from among us? Is God not aware of the appreciative? When those who believe in our revelations come to you, say, peace be upon you. Your Lord has prescribed mercy for himself. Whoever among you does wrong out of ignorance and then repents afterwards and reforms, he is forgiving and merciful. Thus we explain the revelations and expose the path of the unrighteous. Say, I am forbidden from worshipping those you pray to besides God. Say, I will not follow your desires, else I would be lost and not be of those guided. Say, I stand on clear evidence from my Lord, and you have rejected him. I do not possess what you seek me to hasten. The decision belongs solely to God. He states the truth, and he is the best of judges. Say, if I possessed what you seek me to hasten, the matter between you and me would have been settled. God is well aware of the unjust. With him are the keys of the unseen. None knows them except he, and he knows everything on land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but he knows it. And there is not a single grain in the darkness of earth, nor is there anything wet or dry but is in a clear record. It is he who takes you by night and he knows what you earn by day. Then he raises you up in it until a fixed term is fulfilled. Then to him is your return. Then he will inform you of what you used to do. He's the conqueror over his servants and he sends guardians over you until when death overtakes one of you, our envoys take him away and they never fail. Then they are brought back to God, their true master. Unquestionably, his is the judgment, and he is the swiftest of reckoners. Say, who delivers you from the darkness of land and sea. You call upon him humbly and inwardly. If he delivers us from this, we will surely be among the thankful. Say, it is God who delivers you from it and from every disaster, yet then, you associate others with him. Say, he is able to send upon you an affliction from above you or from under your feet. Or he can divide you into factions and make you taste the violence of one another. Note how we explain the revelations so that they may understand 
but your people rejected it, though it is the truth. Say, I am not responsible for you, for every happening is a finality, and you will surely know. When you encounter those who gossip about our revelations, turn away from them until they engage in another topic. But should Satan make you forget, do not sit after the recollection with the wicked people. The righteous are in no way accountable for them. It is only a reminder that they may be careful. So leave alone those who take their religion for play and pastime and whom the worldly life has deceived. But remind with it, lest a soul becomes damned on account of what it has earned. It has no helper or intercessor besides God. Even if it offers every equivalent, none will be accepted from it. These are the ones who are delivered to perdition by their actions. They will have a drink of scalding water and a painful punishment because they used to disbelieve. Say, shall we invoke besides God something that can neither benefit us nor harm us and turn back on our heels after God has guided us, like someone seduced by the devils and confused on earth? who has friends calling him to guidance, come to us. Say, the guidance of God is the guidance, and we are commanded to surrender to the Lord of the universe. And to perform the prayers and to revere him, it is to him that you will be gathered. It is he who created the heavens and the earth in truth. On the day when he says, be, it will be. His saying is the truth, and his is the sovereignty on the day when the trumpet is blown, the knower of secrets and declarations. He is the wise, the expert. Abraham said to his father, Ezar, Do you take idols for gods? I see that you and your people are in evident error. Thus, we showed Abraham the empire of the heavens and the earth, that he might be one of those with certainty. When the night fell over him, he saw a planet. He said, this is my Lord. But when it set, he said, I do not love those that set. Then when he saw the moon rising, he said, this is my Lord. But when it set, he said, if my Lord does not guide me, I will be one of the erring people. Then, when he saw the sun rising, he said, This is my Lord, this is bigger. But when it set, he said, O oh, my people, I am innocent of your idolatry. I have directed my attention towards him who created the heavens and the earth, a monotheist, and I am not of the idolaters. And his people argued with him. He said, Do you argue with me about God when he has guided me? I do not fear what you associate with him unless my Lord wills it. My Lord comprehends all things in knowledge. Will you not reconsider? And why should I fear those you associate with him? And you do not fear associating others with God, for which he sent down to you no authority. Which side is more entitled to security, if you are aware? Those who believe and do not obscure their faith with wrongdoing, those will have security, and they are guided. That was our argument, which we gave to Abraham against his people. We elevate by degrees whomever we will. Your Lord is wise and informed, and we gave him Isaac and Jacob, each of them we guided, and we guided Noah previously, and from his descendants David and Solomon and Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron, thus we reward the righteous. And Zechariah and John and Jesus and Elias, every one of them was of the upright, and Ishmael and Elijah and Jonah and Lot. We favored each one of them over all other people. And of their ancestors and their descendants and their siblings, we chose them and guided them to a straight path. Such is God's guidance. He guides with it whomever he wills of his servants. Had they associated, their deeds would have gone in vain. Those are they to whom we gave the book and wisdom and prophethood. If these reject them, we have entrusted them to others who do not reject them. Those 
are they whom God has guided, so follow their guidance. Say, I ask of you no compensation for it. It is just a reminder for all mankind. They do not value God as he should be valued when they say God did not reveal anything to any human being. Say, who revealed the scripture which Moses brought, a light and guidance for humanity? You put it on scrolls, displaying them, yet concealing much, and you were taught what you did not know, neither you nor your ancestors. Say, God, then leave them toying away in their speculation. This too is a scripture that we revealed, blessed, verifying what preceded it, that you may warn the mother of cities and all around it, those who believe in the hereafter believe in it and are dedicated to their prayers. Who does greater wrong than someone who invents falsehood against God or says, it was revealed to me when nothing was revealed to him or says, I will reveal the like of what God revealed. If only you could see the wrongdoers in the floods of death as the angels with arms outstretched give up your souls. Today you are being repaid with the torment of shame for having said about God other than the truth and for being too proud to accept his revelations. You have come to us individually just as we created you the first time, leaving behind you everything we gave you. We do not see with you your intercessors. Those you claimed were your partners. The link between you is cut, and what you had asserted has failed you. It is God who splits the grain and the seed. He brings the living from the dead, and he brings the dead from the living. Such is God. So how could you deviate it is he who breaks the dawn, and he made the night for rest, and the sun and the moon for calculation. Such is the disposition of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. And it is he who created the stars for you, that you may be guided by them in the darkness of land and sea. We thus explain the revelations for people who know. And it is he who produced you from a single person, then a repository, then a depository. We have detailed the revelations for people who understand. And it is he who sends down water from the sky. With it, we produce vegetation of all kinds, from which we bring greenery, from which we produce grains in clusters, and palm trees with hanging clusters and vineyards and olives and pomegranates, similar and dissimilar. Watch their fruits as they grow and ripen. Surely in this are signs for people who believe. Yet they attributed to God partners, the sprites although he created them, and they invented for him sons and daughters without any knowledge. Glory be to him, he is exalted beyond what they describe. Originator of the heavens and the earth, how can he have a son when he never had a companion? He created all things and he has knowledge of all things, such is God your Lord. There is no God except he, the creator of all things, so worship him. He is responsible for everything. No vision can grasp him, but his grasp is over all vision. He is the subtle, the expert. Insights have come to you from your Lord. Whoever sees, it is to the benefit of his soul, and whoever remains blind, it is to its detriment. I am not a guardian over you. We thus diversify the revelations, lest they say, you have studied, and to clarify them for people who know. Follow what was revealed to you from your Lord. There is no God but he, and turn away from the polytheists. Had God willed, they would not have practiced idolatry. We did not appoint you as a guardian over them, and you are not a manager over them. And do not insult those they call upon besides God, lest they insult God out of hostility and ignorance. We made attractive to every community their deeds. Then to their Lord is their return, and he will inform them of what they used to do. They swear by God, with their most solemn oaths, that if a miracle were to come to them, they would believe in it, 
say the miracles are only with God. But how do you know? Even if it did come, they still would not believe. And we turn away their hearts and their visions as they refuse to believe in it the first time and we leave them blundering in their rebellion. Even if we sent down the angels to them and the dead spoke to them and we gathered all things before them, they still would not believe unless God wills. But most of them are ignorant. Likewise, we have assigned for every prophet an enemy, human and jinn devils, inspiring one another with fancy words in order to deceive. But had your Lord willed, they would not have done it. So leave them to their fabrications, so that the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter may incline to it and be content with it, and that they may perpetrate whatever they perpetrate. Shall I seek a judge other than God, when he is the one who revealed to you the book explained in detail? Those to whom we gave the book know that it is the truth revealed from your Lord. So do the word of your Lord has been completed in truth and justice. There is no changing to his words. He is the hearer, the knower. If you were to obey most of those on earth, they would divert you from God's path. They follow nothing but assumptions, and they only conjecture. Your Lord knows best who strays from his path, and he knows best the guided ones. So eat of that over which the name of God was pronounced, if you indeed believe in his revelations. And why should you not eat of that over which the name of God is pronounced, when he has detailed for you what is prohibited for you, unless you are compelled by necessity? Many lead astray with their opinions, through lack of knowledge. Your Lord knows best the transgressors, so abandon sin outward and inward. Those who commit sins will be repaid for what they use to perpetrate. And do not eat from that over which the name of God was not pronounced, for it is abomination. The devils inspire their followers to argue with you, but if you obey them, you would be polytheists. Is he who was dead, then we gave him life and made for him a light by which he walks among the people, like he who is in total darkness and cannot get out of it. Thus, the doings of disbelievers are made to appear good to them. And thus, we set up in every city its leading wicked sinners to conspire in it but they conspire only against themselves, and they do not realize it. When a sign comes to them, they say, we will not believe unless we are given the like of what was given to God's messengers. God knows best where to place his message. Humiliation from God and severe torment will afflict the criminals for their scheming. Whomever God desires to guide, he spreads open his heart to Islam, and whomever he desires to misguide, he makes his heart narrow, constricted, as though he were climbing up the sky. God thus lays defilement upon those who do not believe. This is the straight path of your Lord. We have explained the revelations in detail for people who recollect. For them is the home of peace with their Lord, and he is their master because of what they used to do. On the day when he gathers them all together, O oh, assembly of jinn, you have exploited multitudes of humans. Their adherents among mankind will say, Our Lord, we have profited from one another, but we have reached the term that you have assigned for us. He will say, The fire is your dwelling, wherein you will remain, except as God wills. Your Lord is wise and informed. Thus we make some of the wrongdoers befriend one another because of what they used to do. O assembly of jinn and humans, did there not come to you messengers from among you, relating to you my revelations, and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? They will say, we testify against ourselves. The life of the world seduced them. They will testify against themselves that they were disbelievers. That is because your Lord would not destroy towns for injustice, while their inhabitants are unaware. They all have ranks according to what they did, and your Lord is not unaware of what they do. Your Lord is the rich beyond need, the possessor of mercy, 
If he wills, he can do away with you and substitute whomever he wills in your place, just as he produced you from the descendants of another people. What you promised is coming, and you cannot thwart it. Say, O oh my people, work according to your ability, and so will I. You will come to know to whom will belong the sequel of the abode. The wrongdoers will not prevail, and they set aside for God a share of the crops and the livestock he created. And they say, this is for God, according to their claim, and this is for our idols. But the share of their idols does not reach God, yet the share of God reaches their idols. Evil is their judgment. Likewise, their idols entice many idolaters to kill their children in order to lead them to their ruin and confuse them in their religion. Had God willed, they would not have done it. So leave them to their fraud. And they say, these animals and crops are restricted. None may eat them, except those we permit by their claims, and animals whose backs are forbidden, and animals over which they do not pronounce the name of God, fabricating lies against him. He will repay them for what they use to invent. And they say, what lies in the wombs of these animals is exclusively for our males and prohibited to our wives. But if it is stillborn, they can share in it. He will surely punish them for their allegations. He's wise and knowing. Lost are those who kill their children foolishly, with no basis in knowledge, and forbid what God has provided for them, innovations about God. They have gone astray. They are not guided. It is he who produces gardens, both cultivated and wild, and date palms and crops of diverse tastes, and olives and pomegranates, similar and dissimilar. Eat of its fruit when it yields, and give its dew on the day of its harvest, and do not waste. He does not love the wasteful. Among the livestock are some for transportation and some for clothing. Eat of what God has provided for you and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. He is to you an outright enemy. Eight pairs, two of the sheep and two of the goats. Say, did he forbid the two males or the two females or what the wombs of the two females contain? Inform me with knowledge if you are truthful. And two of the camels and two of the cattle say, Did he forbid the two males or the two females, or what the wombs of the two females contain? Were you present when God enjoined this upon you? Who does greater wrong than he who invents lies and attributes them to God in order to mislead people without knowledge? God does not guide the wicked people. Say, in what was revealed to me, I find nothing forbidden to a consumer who eats it except carrion or spilled blood or the flesh of swine, because it is impure or a sinful offering dedicated to other than God. But if someone is compelled by necessity without being deliberate or malicious, your Lord is forgiving and merciful. For the Jews, we forbade everything with claws. As of cattle and sheep, we forbade them their fat, except what adheres to their backs, or the entrails, or what is mixed with bone. This is how we penalize them for their inequity. We are indeed truthful. If they accuse you of lying, say, your Lord is possessor of infinite mercy, but his wrath cannot be averted from the guilty people. The polytheists will say, had God willed, we would not have practiced idolatry, nor would have our forefathers, nor would we have prohibited anything. Likewise, those before them lied until they tasted our might. Say, do you have any knowledge that you can produce for us? You follow nothing but conjecture and you only guess. Say, to God belongs the conclusive argument. Had he willed, he would have guided you all. Say, produce your witnesses who would testify that God has prohibited this. If they testify, do not testify with them, and do not follow the whims of those who deny our revelation, and those who do not believe in the hereafter, and those who equate others with their Lord.
Say, come, let me tell you what your Lord has forbidden you, that you associate nothing with him, that you honor your parents, that you do not kill your children because of poverty. We provide for you and for them, that you do not come near indecencies, whether outward or inward, and that you do not kill the soul which God has sanctified, except in the course of justice. All this he has enjoined upon you so that you may understand. And do not come near the property of the orphan, except with the best intentions until he reaches maturity and give full weight and full measure equitably. We do not burden any soul beyond its capacity. And when you speak, be fair, even if it concerns a close relative and fulfill your covenant with God. All this he has enjoined upon you so that you may take heed. This is my path straight, so follow it, and do not follow the other paths, lest they divert you from his path. All this he has enjoined upon you, that you may refrain from wrongdoing. Then we gave Moses the scripture, perfect for the righteous, and explaining everything clearly, and a beacon and mercy, that they may believe in the encounter with their Lord. This too is a blessed scripture that we revealed. So follow it and be righteous that you may receive mercy. Lest you say, the scripture was revealed to two parties before us and we were unaware of their teachings. Or lest you say, had the scripture been revealed to us, we would have been better guided than they. Clarification has come to you from your Lord and guidance and mercy. Who then does greater wrong than he who gives the lie to God's messages and turns away from them? We will repay those who turn away from our messages with the worst kind of punishment because of their turning away. Are they waiting for anything but for the angels to come to them or for your Lord to arrive or for some of your Lord's signs to come? On the day when some of your Lord's signs come, no soul will benefit from its faith unless it had believed previously or had earned goodness through its faith. Say, wait, we too are waiting. As for those who divided their religion and became sects, you have nothing to do with them. Their case rests with God. Then he will inform them of what they used to do. Whoever comes up with a good deed will have ten times its like. And whoever comes up with an evil deed will be repaid only with its equivalent. They will not be wronged. Say, my Lord has guided me to a straight path, an upright religion, the creed of Abraham the monotheist, who was not a polytheist. Say, my prayer and my worship and my life and my death are devoted to God, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he. Thus I am commanded, and I am the first of those who submit. Say, am I to seek a Lord other than God, when he is the Lord of all things? No soul gets except what it is due, and no soul bears the burdens of another. Then to your Lord is your return. Then he will inform you regarding your disputes. It is he who made you successors on the earth, and raised some of you in ranks over others in order to test you through what he has given you. Your Lord is quick in retribution and he is forgiving and merciful. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, Alif, Lam, Mim, Sead, a scripture was revealed to you, so let there be no anxiety in your heart because of it. You are to warn with it and a reminder for the believers Follow what is revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow other masters beside him. Little you recollect. How many a town have we destroyed? Our might came upon them by night or while they were napping. When our might came upon them, their only cry was, we were indeed wrongdoers. We will question those to whom messengers were sent, and we will question the messengers. We will narrate to them with knowledge for we were never absent. The scales on that day will be just. Those whose weights are heavy, it is they who are the successful. 
But as for those whose weights are light, it is they who have lost their souls because they used to mistreat our revelations. We have established you firmly on earth and made for you in it livelihood, but rarely do you give thanks. We created you, then we shaped you, then we said to the angels, bow down before Adam. So they bowed down, except for Satan. He was not of those who bowed down. He said, what prevented you from bowing down when I have commanded you? He said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and you created him from mud. He said, get down from it. It is not for you to act arrogantly in it. Get out, you are one of the lowly. He said, give me, give me respite until the day they are resurrected. He said, you are of those given respite. He said, because you have lured me, I will waylay them on your straight path. Then I will come at them from before them and from behind them and from their right and from their left. And you will not find most of them appreciative. He said, get out of it, despised and vanquished. Whoever among them follows you, I will fill up hell with you all. And you, Adam, inhabit the garden, you and your wife, and eat whatever you wish. But do not approach this tree, lest you become sinners. But Satan whispered to them, to reveal to them their nakedness, which was invisible to them. He said, Your Lord has only forbidden you this tree, lest you become angels, or become immortals. And he swore to them, I am a sincere advisor to you. So he lured them with deceit. And when they tasted the tree, their nakedness became evident to them. And they began covering themselves with the leaves of the garden. And their Lord called out to them, Did I not forbid you from this tree and say to you that Satan is a sworn enemy to you? They said, Our Lord, we have done wrong to ourselves. Unless you forgive us and have mercy on us, we will be among the losers. He said, Fall, some of you enemies to one another. On earth you will have residence and livelihood for a while. He said, In it you will live, and in it you will die, and from it you will be brought out. O children of Adam, we have provided you with clothing to cover your bodies, and for luxury, but the clothing of piety that is best. These are some of God's revelations, so that they may take heed. O oh, children of Adam, do not let Satan seduce you as he drove your parents out of the garden, stripping them of their garments to show them their nakedness. He sees you, him and his clan from where you cannot see them. We have made the devils friends of those who do not believe. And when they commit an indecency, they say, we found our parents doing this and God has commanded us to do it. Say, God does not command indecencies. Are you attributing to God what you do not know? Say, my Lord commands justice and to stand devoted at every place of worship. So call upon him and dedicate your faith to him alone. Just as he originated you, so you will return. Some he has guided, and some have deserved misguidance. They have, uh, they have adopted the devils for patrons rather than God, and they assume that they are guided. O oh, children of Adam, dress properly at every place of worship, and eat and drink, but do not be excessive. He does not love the excessive. Say, who forbade God's finery, which he has produced for his servants, and the delights of livelihood? Say... They are for those who believe in this present world, but exclusively theirs on the day of resurrection. We thus detail the revelations for people who know. Say my Lord has forbidden immoralities, both open and secret, and sin and unjustified aggression, and that you associate with God anything for which he revealed no sanction, and that you say about God what you do not know. For every nation is an appointed time. When their time has come, they cannot delay it by one hour, nor can they advance it. O children of Adam, 
when messengers from among you come to you, relating to you, my revelations, whoever practices piety and reforms, upon them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. But as for those who reject our revelations and are too proud to accept them, these are the inmates of the fire, where they will remain forever. Who does greater wrong than he who invents lies about God or denies his revelations? These, their share of the decree will reach them, until when our envoys come to them to take their souls away, they will say, where are they whom you used to pray to besides God? They will say, they have abandoned us, and they will testify against themselves that they were faithless. He will say, join the crowds of jinn and humans who have gone into the fire before you. Every time a crowd enters, it will curse its sister crowd, until when they are all in it, the last of them will say to the first of them, our Lord, these are the ones who misled us, so inflict on them a double punishment in the fire. He will say, each will have a double, but you do not know. The first of them will say to the last of them, you have no advantage over us, so taste the torment for what you used to earn. Those who reject our revelations and are too arrogant to uphold them, the doors of heaven will not be open for them, nor will they enter paradise until the camel passes through the eye of the needle. Thus, we repay the guilty. For them is a couch of hell, and above them are sheets of fire. Thus, we repay the wrongdoers. As for those who believe and do righteous works, we never burden any soul beyond its capacity. These are the inhabitants of the garden, abiding therein eternally. We will remove whatever rancor is in their hearts. Rivers will flow beneath them, and they will say, Praise be to God, who has guided us to this. Had God not guided us, we would never be guided. The messengers of our Lord did come with the truth, and it will be proclaimed to them, this is the garden you are made to inherit on account of what you used to do. And the inhabitants of the garden will call out to the inmates of the fire, we found what our Lord promised us to be true. Did you find what your Lord promised you to be true? They will say, yes. Thereupon, a caller will announce in their midst, the curse of God is upon the wrongdoers. Those who hinder from the path of God and seek to distort it, and who deny the hereafter. And between them is a partition, and on the elevations are men who recognize everyone by their features. They will call to the inhabitants of the garden, Peace be upon you. They have not entered it, but they are hoping. And when their eyes are directed towards the inmates of the fire, they will say, Our Lord, do not place us among the wrongdoing people. And the dwellers of the elevations will call to men they recognize by their features, saying, Your hoardings did not avail you, nor did your arrogance. Are these the ones you swore God will not touch with mercy? Enter the garden. You have nothing to fear, and you will not grieve. The inmates of the fire will call on the inhabitants of the garden, pour some water over us, or some of what God has provided for you. They will say, God has forbidden them for the disbelievers, those who took their religion lightly and in jest, and whom the worldly life deceived. Today, we will ignore them, as they ignored the meeting on this day of theirs, and they used to deny our revelations. We have given them a scripture which we detailed with knowledge, guidance and mercy for people who believe. Are they waiting for anything but its fulfillment? The day its fulfillment comes true, those who disregarded it before will say, the messengers of our Lord did come with the truth. Have we any intercessors to intercede for us? Or 
could we be sent back to behave differently from the way we behaved before? They ruined their souls, and what they used to invent has failed them. Your Lord is God, He who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then established Himself on the throne. The night overtakes the day as it pursues it persistently, and the sun and the moon and the stars are subservient by His command. His is the creation, and His is the command. Blessed is God, Lord of all beings. Call upon your Lord humbly and privately. He does not love the aggressors, and do not corrupt on earth after its reformation, and pray to Him with fear and hope. God's mercy is close to the doers of good. It is He who sends the wind ahead of His mercy. Then, when they have gathered up heavy clouds, we drive them to a dead land where we make water come down, and with it we bring out all kinds of fruits. Thus, we bring out the dead. Perhaps you will reflect. As for the good land, it yields its produce by the leave of its Lord. But as for the bad, it produces nothing but hardship and misery. Thus, we explain the revelations in various ways for people who are thankful. We sent Noah to his people. He said, O oh my people, worship God. You have no God other than him. I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day. The dignitaries among his people said, We see that you are in obvious error. He said, O oh my people, I am not in error, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I deliver to you the messages of my Lord, and I advise you, and I know from God what you do not know. Do you wonder that a reminder has come to you from your Lord, through a man from among you to warn you and to lead you to righteousness so that you may attain mercy? But they called him a liar, so we saved him and those with him in the ark, and we drowned those who rejected our revelations. They were blind people. And to add their brother Hud, he said, O oh my people, worship God. You have no God other than him. Will you not take heed? The elite of his people who disbelieved said, We see foolishness in you, and we think that you are a liar. He said, O oh my people, there is no foolishness in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I convey to you the messages of my Lord, and I'm a trustworthy advisor to you. Are you surprised that a reminder has come to you from your Lord, through a man from among you, to warn you? Remember how he made you successors after the people of Noah, and increased you greatly in stature. And remember God's blessings, so that you may prosper. They said, did you come to us to make us worship God alone, and abandon what our ancestors used to worship? Then bring us what you threaten us with, if you are truthful. He said, condemnation and wrath have befallen you from your Lord. Are you arguing with me over names which you and your ancestors invented, for which God sent down no authority? Just wait. I am waiting with you. So we saved him and those with him by mercy from us, and we cut off the roots of those who rejected our revelations and were not believers. And to Thamud, their brother Saleh, he said, O oh my people, worship God. You have no God other than him. Clarification has come to you from your Lord. This she-camel of God is a sign for you. So leave her to graze on God's earth and do her no harm, lest a painful penalty seizes you. And remember how he made you successors after Ard and settled you in the land. You make for yourselves mansions on its plains and carve out dwellings in the mountains. So remember God's benefits and do not roam the earth corruptingly. The elite of his people, who were arrogant, said to the common people, who had believed, Do you know that Saleh is sent from his Lord? They said, We are believers in what he was sent with. Those who were arrogant said, We reject what you believe in, 
So they hamstrung the she-camel and defied the command of their lord and said, O Saleh, bring upon us what you threaten us with if you are one of the messengers. Whereupon the quake overtook them and they became lifeless bodies in their homes. Then he turned away from them and said, O my people, I have delivered to you the message of my Lord, and I have advised you, but you do not like those who give advice. And Lot, when he said to his people, Do you commit lewdness? No people anywhere have ever committed before you. You lust after men rather than women. You are an excessive people. And his people's only answer was to say, expel them from your town. They are purest people. But we saved him and his family except for his wife. She was of those who lagged behind. And we rained down on them a rain. Note the consequences for the sinners. And to Median, their brother, Shuaib, he said, O oh, my people, worship God. You have no God other than him. A clear proof has come to you from your Lord. Give full measure and wait, and do not cheat people out of their rights, and do not corrupt the land once it has been set right. This is better for you if you are believers. And do not lurk on every path, making threats and turning away from the path of God, those who believe in him, seeking to distort it. And remember how you were few and how he made you numerous. So note the consequences for the corruptors. Since some of you believed in what I was sent with, and some did not believe, be patient until God judges between us, for he is the best of judges. The arrogant elite among his people said, O oh Shuaib, we will evict you from our town, along with those who believe with you, unless you return to our religion. He said, even if we are unwilling, we would be fabricating falsehood against God if we were to return to your religion after God has saved us from it. It is not for us to return to it unless God, our Lord, wills. Our Lord embraces all things in knowledge. In God, we place our trust. Our Lord, decide between us and our people in truth, for you are the best of deciders. The elite of his people who disbelieved said, if you follow Shuaib, you will be losers. Thereupon the quake struck them, and they became lifeless bodies in their homes. Those who rejected Shuaib as if they never prospered therein. Those who rejected Shuaib, it was they who were the losers. So he turned away from them and said, O oh my people, I have delivered to you the messages of my Lord and I have advised you, so why should I grieve over a disbelieving people? We did not send any prophet to any town, but we afflicted its people with misery and adversity so that they may humble themselves. Then we substituted prosperity in place of hardship until they increased in number and said, adversity and prosperity has touched our ancestors. Then we seized them suddenly while they were unaware. Had the people of the towns believed and turned righteous, we would have opened for them the blessings of the heaven and the earth. But they rejected the truth, so we seized them by what they were doing. Do the people of the towns feel secure that our might will not come upon them by night while they sleep? Do the people of the towns feel secure that our might will not come upon them by day while they play? Do they feel safe from God's plan? None feel safe from God's plan, except the losing people. Is it not guidance for those who inherit the land after its inhabitants, that if we willed, we could strike them for their sins and seal up their hearts so that they would not hear? These towns, we narrate to you some of their tales. Their messengers came to them with the clear signs, but they would not believe in what they had rejected previously. Thus, God seals the hearts of the disbelievers. We found most of them untrue to their covenants. We found most of them corrupt. Then, after them, we sent Moses with our miracles to Pharaoh and his establishment, but they denounced them, 
So consider the end of the evildoers. Moses said, O Pharaoh, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. It is only proper that I should not say about God anything other than the truth. I have come to you with clear evidence from your Lord, so let the children of Israel go with me. He said, If you brought a miracle, then present it if you are truthful. So he threw his staff, and it was an apparent serpent. And he pulled out his hand, and it was white to the onlookers. The notables among Pharaoh's people said, This is really a skilled magician. He wants to evict you from your land, so what do you recommend? They said, Put him off and his brother and send heralds to the cities, and let them bring you every skillful magician. The magicians came to Pharaoh and said, Surely there is a reward for us if we are the victors. He said, And ye, yes, and you will be among my favorites. They said, O oh Moses, either you throw or we are the ones to throw. He said, You throw. And when they threw, they beguiled the eyes of the people and intimidated them and produced a mighty magic. And, and we inspired Moses, throw your staff. And at once it swallowed what they were faking. So the truth came to pass, and what they were producing came to nothing. There they were defeated and utterly reduced. And the magicians fell to their knees. They said, we have believed in the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh said, do you believe in him before I've given you permission? This is surely a conspiracy you schemed in the city in order to expel its people from it. You will surely know. I will cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides. Then I will crucify you all. They said, it is to our Lord that we will return. You are taking vengeance on us only because we have believed in the signs of our Lord when they have come to us. Our Lord, pour out patience upon us and receive our souls in submission. The chiefs of Pharaoh's people said, Will you let Moses and his people cause trouble in the land and forsake you and your gods? He said, We will kill their sons and spare their women. We have absolute power over them. Moses said to his people, Seek help in God and be patient. The earth belongs to God. He gives it in inheritance to whomever he wills of his servants, and the future belongs to the righteous. He said, well, yeah, we were persecuted before you came to us, and after you came to us. He said, but if you do, perhaps your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you successes in the land. Then he will see how you behave. And we afflicted the people of Pharaoh with barren years and with shortage of crops that they may take heed. When something good came their way, they said, this is ours. And when something bad happened to them, they ascribed the evil omen to Moses and those with him. In fact, their omen is with God, but most of them do not know. And they said, no matter what sign you bring us to bewitch us with, we will not believe in you. So we let loose upon them the flood and the locusts, and the lice, and the frogs, and blood, all explicit signs, but they were too arrogant. They were a sinful people. Whenever a plague befell them, they would say, Oh, Moses, pray to your Lord for us according to the covenant he made with you. If you lift the plague from us, we will believe in you, and let the children of Israel go with you. But when we lifted the plague from them, for a term they were to fulfill, they broke their promise. So we took vengeance on them and drowned them in the sea because they rejected our signs and paid no heed to them. And we made the oppressed people inherit the eastern and western parts of the land which we had blessed. Thus the fair promise of your Lord to the children of Israel was fulfilled because of their endurance and we destroyed what Pharaoh and his people had built and what they had harvested. And we delivered the children of Israel across the sea.
And when they came upon a people who were devoted to some statues of theirs, they said, O oh Moses, make for us a god as they have gods. He said, You are truly an ignorant people. What these people are concerned with is perdition, and their deeds are based on falsehoods. He said, Shall I seek for you a god other than God when he has favored you over all other people? Remember how he saved you from Pharaoh's people who subjected you to the worst of sufferings, killing your sons and sparing your women. In that was a tremendous trial from your Lord. And we appointed to Moses thirty nights and completed them with ten. And thus the time appointed by his Lord was forty nights. And Moses said to his brother Aaron, Take my place among my people and be upright and do not follow the way of the mischief makers. And when Moses came to our appointment and his Lord spoke to him, he said, My Lord, allow me to look and see you. He said, You will not see me, but look at the mountain. If it stays in its place, you will see me. But when his Lord manifested himself to the mountain, he turned it into dust, and Moses fell down unconscious. Then when he recovered, he said, Glory be to you, I repent to you, and I am the first of the believers. He said, O oh Moses, I have chosen you over all people for my messages and for my words, so take what I have given you and be one of the thankful. And we inscribe for him in the tablets all kinds of enlightenments and decisive explanation of all things. Hold fast to them and exhort your people to adopt the best of them. I will show you the fate of Sinzu Singh. I will turn away from my revelations those who behave proudly on earth without justification. Even if they see every sign, they will not believe in it. And if they see the path of rectitude, they will not adopt it for a path. And if they see the path of error, they will adopt it for a path. That is because they denied our revelations and paid no attention to them. Those who deny our revelations and the meeting of the hereafter, their deeds will come to nothing. Will they be repaid except according to what they used to do? In his absence, the people of Moses adopted a calf made from their ornaments, a body which lowed. Did they not see that it could not speak to them nor guide them in any way? They took it for worship. They were in the wrong. Then when they regretted and realized that they had erred, they said, unless our Lord extends his mercy to us and forgives us, we will be among the losers. And when Moses returned to his people, angry and disappointed, he said, What an awful thing you did in my absence. Did you forsake the commandments of your Lord so hastily? And he threw down the tablets, and he took hold of his brother's head, dragging him towards himself. He said, Son of my mother, the people have overpowered me and were about to kill me, so do not allow the enemies to gloat over me and do not count me among the unjust people. He said, My Lord, forgive me and my brother, and admit us into your mercy, for you are the most merciful of the merciful. Those who idolize the calf have incurred wrath from their Lord and humiliation in this life. We thus requite the innovators. As for those who commit sins and then repent afterwards and believe, your Lord thereafter is forgiving and merciful. When the anger abated in Moses, he took up the tablets. In their transcript is guidance and mercy for those in awe of their Lord. And Moses chose from his people 70 men for our appointment. When the tremor shook them, he said, My Lord, had you willed, you could have destroyed them before, and me too. Will you destroy us for what the fools among us have done? This is but your test. With it, you misguide whomever you will, and guide whomever you will. You are our protector, so forgive us and have mercy on us. You are the best of forgivers. And inscribe for us goodness in this world and in the hereafter. We have turned to you. He said, My punishment I inflict it upon whomever I will, but my mercy 
encompasses all things. I will specify it for those who act righteously and practice regular charity and those who believe in our signs. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in the Torah and the gospel in their possession. He directs them to righteousness and deters them from evil and allows for them all good things and prohibits for them wickedness and unloads the burdens and the shackles that are upon them. Those who believe in him and respect him and support him and follow the light that came down with him, these are the successful. Say, O oh people, I am the messenger of God to you all, he to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. There is no God but he. He gives life and causes death. So believe in God and his messenger, the unlettered prophet who believes in God and his words, and follow him that you may be guided. Among the people of Moses is a community that guides by truth and thereby does justice. We divided them into 12 tribal communities and we inspired Moses when his people asked him for something to drink. Strike the rock with your staff, whereupon 12 springs gushed from it. Each group recognized his drinking place and we shaded them with clouds and we sent down upon them manna and quails. Eat of the good things we have provided for you. They did not wrong us, but they used to wrong their own selves. And it was said to them, Settle this town and eat therein whatever you wish, and speak modestly and enter the gate in humility. We will forgive your sins and will promote the righteous. But the wicked among them substituted other words for the words given to them. So we sent down upon them a plague from the sky because of their wrongdoing. Ask them about the town by the sea when they violated the Sabbath. When they observed the Sabbath, their fish would come to them abundantly. But when they violated the Sabbath, their fish would not come to them. Thus, we tried them because they disobeyed. And when a group of them said, why, why, why do you counsel? I said, uh, Kites are people whom God will annihilate or punish with a severe punishment. They said, as, excess, yet is, as an excuse to your Lord and so that they may become righteous. Then, when they neglected what they were reminded of, we saved those who prohibited evil and we seized those who did wrong with a terrible punishment because of their sinfulness. Then, when they rebelled against the commands to refrain, we said to them, be despicable apes. Your Lord has announced that. He would send against them until the day of resurrection, those who would inflict terrible suffering upon them. Your Lord is swift in retribution, yet he is forgiving and merciful. And we scattered them into communities on earth, some of them righteous and some of them short of that. And we tested them with fortunes and misfortunes so that they may return. They were succeeded by generations who inherited the scripture and chose the materials of this world, saying, we will be forgiven. And should similar materials come their way, they would again seize them. Did they not make a covenant to uphold the scripture and to not say about God except the truth? Did they not study its contents? But the home of the hereafter is better for the cautious. Will you not understand? Those who adhere to the scripture and practice prayer, we will not waste the reward of the reformers. And when we suspended the mountain over them, as if it was an umbrella, and they thought it would fall on them, hold fast to what we have given you, and remember what it contains, so that you may be saved. And when your Lord summoned the descendants of Adam and made them testify about themselves, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yes, we testify. Thus, you cannot say on the day of resurrection, We were unaware of this. Nor can you say, Our ancestors practiced idolatry before, and we are their descendants who came after them. Will you destroy us for what the falsifiers did? We thus elaborate the revelations so that they may return. 
and relate to them the story of him to whom we delivered our signs. But he detached himself from them, so Satan went after him, and he became one of the perverts. Had we willed, we could have elevated him through them, but he clung to the ground and followed his desires. His metaphor is that of a dog. If you chase it, it pants, and if you leave it alone, it pants. Such is the metaphor of the people who deny our signs. So tell the tale so that they may ponder. Evil is the metaphor of the people who reject our signs and wrong themselves. Whomever God guides is the guided one, and whomever he sends astray, these are the losers. We have destined for hell multitudes of jinn and humans. They have hearts with which they do not understand. They have eyes with which they do not see. They have ears with which they do not hear. These are like cattle. In fact, they are further astray. These are the heedless. To God belong the most beautiful names, so call him by them and disregard those who blaspheme his names. They will be repaid for what they used to do. Among those we created is a community. They guide by truth and do justice thereby. As for those who reject our messages, we will gradually lead them from where they do not know. And I will encourage them. My plan is firm, do they not think? There is no madness in their friend. He is but a plain warner. Have they not observed the government of the heavens and the earth and all the things that God created and that their time may have drawn near? Which message besides this will they believe in? Whomever God misguides has no guide and he leaves them blundering in their transgression. They ask you about the hour. When will it come? Say, Knowledge of it rests with my Lord. None can reveal its coming except he. It weighs heavily on the heavens and the earth. It will not come upon you except suddenly. They ask you as if you are responsible for it. Say, knowledge of it rests with God, but most people do not know. Say, I have... Troll over any benefit or shh harm to myself, except as God wills. Had I known the future, I would have acquired much good and no harm would have touched me. I am only a warner and a herald of good news to a people who believe. It is he who created you from a single person and made from it its mate, that he may find comfort with her. Then, when he has covered her, she conceives a light load, and she carries it around. But when she has grown heavy, they pray to God, their Lord, if you give us a good child, we will be among the thankful. But when he has given them a good child, they attribute partners to him in what he has given them. God is exalted above what they associate. Do they idolize those who create nothing and are themselves created and can neither help them? nor help their own selves, and if you invite them to guidance, they will not follow you. It is the same for you, whether you invite them or remain silent. Those you call upon besides God are servants like you, so call upon them and let them answer you, if you are truthful. Do they have feet with which they walk, or do they have hands with which they strike, or do they have eyes with which they see? Or do they have ears with which they hear? Say, call upon your partners, then plot against me, and do not wait. My master is God, he who sent down the book and he takes care of the righteous. Those you call upon besides him cannot help you, nor can they help themselves. And if you call them to Gidans, they will not hear. And you see them looking at you, yet they do not see. Be tolerant and command decency and avoid the ignorant. And when a suggestion from Satan assails you, take refuge with God. He is hearing and knowing. 
Those who are righteous, when an impulse from Satan strikes them, they remind themselves and immediately see clearly. But their brethren lead them relentlessly into error, and they never stop short. If you do not produce a miracle for them, they say, why don't you improvise one? Say, I only follow what is inspired to me from my Lord. These are insights from your Lord, and guidance and mercy for a people who believe. When the Quran is recited, listen to it and pay attention, so that you may experience mercy. And remember your Lord within yourself, humbly and fearfully and quietly, in the morning and the evening, and do not be of the neglectful. Those who are in the presence of your Lord are not too proud to worship him. They recite his praises, and to him they bow down. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, they ask you about the bounties. Say, the bounties are for God and the messenger. So be mindful of God and settle your differences and obey God and his messenger if you are believers. The believers are those whose hearts tremble when God is mentioned and when his revelations are recited to them, they strengthen them in faith and upon their Lord they rely. Those who perform the prayer and from our provisions to them, they spend. These are the true believers. They have high standing with their Lord and forgiveness and a generous provision. Even as your Lord brought you out of your home with the truth, some believers were reluctant, arguing with you about the truth after it was made clear, as if they were being driven to death as they looked on. God has promised you one of the two groups that it would be yours, but you wanted the unarmed group to be yours. God intends to prove the truth with his words and to uproot the disbelievers. In order to confirm the truth and nullify falsehood, even though the guilty dislike it. When you appeal to your Lord for help, he answered you, I am reinforcing you with 1,000 angels in succession. God only made it a message of hope and to set your hearts at rest. Victory comes only from God. God is mighty and wise. He made drowsiness overcome you as a secure Tvaromim, and he sent down upon you water from the sky to it and to rid you of Satan's pollution and to fortify your hearts and to strengthen your foothold. Your Lord inspired the angels. I am with you, so support those who believe. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. So strike above the necks and strike off every fingertip of theirs. That is because they opposed God and his messenger. Whoever opposes God and his messenger, God is severe in retribution. Here it is, so taste it. For the disbelievers, there is the suffering of the fire. O you who believe, when you meet those who disbelieve on the march, never turn your backs on them. Anyone who turns his back on them on that day, except while maneuvering for battle or to join another group, has incurred wrath from God, and his abode is hell. What a miserable destination. It was not you who killed them, but it was God who killed them, and it was not you who launched when you launched, but it was God who launched, that he may bestow upon the believers an excellent reward. Guard him. Such is the case. God will undermine the strategy of the disbelievers. If you desire a verdict, the verdict has come to you. And if you desist, it would be best for you. And if you return, we will return. And your troops, however numerous, will not benefit you. God is with the believers. O oh, you who believe, obey God and his messenger and do not turn away from him when you hear. And be not like those who say, we, we, he, when they do not hear. The worst of animals to God are the deaf and dumb, those who do not reason. Had God recognized any good in them, he would have made them hear, and had he made them hear, they would have turned away defiantly. Oh, go you who believe, respond to God, 
and to the messenger when he calls you to what will revive you and know that God stands between a man and his heart and that to him you will be gathered. And beware of discord which does not afflict the wrongdoers among you exclusively and know that God is severe in retribution. And remember when you were few, oppressed in the land, fearing that people may capture you, but he sheltered you and supported you with his victory and provided you with good things so that you may be thankful. O you who believe, do not betray God and the messenger, nor betray your trusts while you know and know that your possessions and your children are a test, and that God possesses an immense reward. O oh, you who believe, if you remain conscious of God, he will give you a criterion and will remit from you your sins and will forgive you. God is possessor of infinite grace. When the disbelievers plotted against you to imprison you or kill you or expel you, they planned and God planned. But God is the best of planners, and when our revelations are recited to them, they say, We have heard. Had we wanted, we could have said the like of this. These are nothing but myths of the ancients. And they said, Our God, if this is the truth from you, then rain down on us stones from the sky, or visit us with a painful affliction. But God would not punish them while you are amongst them. And God would not punish them as long as they seek forgiveness. Yet why should God not punish them when they are turning others away from the sacred mosque, although they are not its custodians? Its rightful custodians are the pious, but most of them do not know. Their prayer at the house was nothing but whistling and clapping, so taste the punishment for your blasphemy. Those who disbelieve spend their wealth to repel from God's path, they will spend it, then it will become a source of sorrow for them, and then they will be defeated. Those who disbelieve will be herded into hell. That God may distinguish the bad from the good, and heap the bad on top of one another, and pile them together, and throw them in hell. These are the losers. Say to those who disbelieve, if they desist, their past will be forgiven. But if they persist, the practice of the ancients has passed away. Fight them until there's no more persecution and religion becomes exclusively for God. But if they desist, God is seeing of what they do. And if they turn away, know that God is your protector, the best protector and the best supporter. And know that whatever spoils you gain, to God belongs its fifth. And to the messenger and the relatives and the orphans and the poor and to the wayfarer, provided you believe in God and in what we reveal to our servant on the day of distinction, the day when the two armies met, God is capable of everything. Recall when you were on the nearer bank and they were on the further bank and the caravan was below you. Had you planned for this meeting, you would have disagreed on the timing, but God was to carry out a predetermined matter so that those who perish would perish by clear evidence, and those who survive would survive by clear evidence. God is hearing and knowing. God made them appear in your dream as few. Had he made them appear as many, you would have lost heart and disputed in the matter. But God saved the situation. He knows what the hearts contain. When you met, he made them appear as few in your eyes and made you appear fewer in their eyes so that God may conclude a predetermined matter. To God, all matters revert. O oh, you who believe, when you meet a force, stand firm and remember God much so that you may prevail and obey God and his messenger and do not dispute lest you falter and lose your courage and be steadfast. God is with the steadfast. And do not be like those who left their homes boastfully, showing off before the people and barring others from the path of God. God comprehends what they do. Satan made their deeds appear good to them and said, You cannot be defeated by any people today, and I am at your side. 
but when the two armies came in sight of one another, he turned on his heels and said, I am innocent of you. I see what you do not see. I fear God. God is severe in punishment. The Hippocrates and those in whose hearts is sickness said, their religion has deluded these people. But Hoover puts his trust in God. God is mighty and wise. If only you could see as the angels take away those who disbelieve, striking their faces and their backs, taste the agony of the burning. That is because of what your hands have committed and because God is not unjust to the servants. Like the behavior of the people of Pharaoh and those before them, they rejected the signs of God. So God sees them for their sins. God is powerful, severe in punishment. That is because God would never change a blessing he has bestowed on a people unless they change what is within themselves. And because God is hearing and knowing. Such was the case with the people of Pharaoh and those before them. They denied the signs of their Lord, so we annihilated them for their wrongs and we drowned the people of Pharaoh. They were all evildoers. The worst of creatures in God's view are those who disbelieve. They have no faith. Those of them with whom you made a treaty, but they violate their agreement every time. They are not righteous. If you confront them in battle, make of them a fearsome example for those who follow them, that they may take heed. If you fear treachery on the part of a people, break off with them in a like manner. God does not like the treacherous. Let not the disbelievers assume that they are ahead. They will not escape. And prepare against them all the power you can muster and all the cavalry you can mobilize to terrify thereby God's enemies and your enemies and others besides them whom you do not know, but God knows them. Whatever you spend in God's way will be repaid to you in full, and you will not be wronged. But if they incline towards peace, then incline towards it, and put your trust in God. He is the hearer, the knower. If they intend to deceive you, God is sufficient for you. It is He who supported you with His aid and with the believers, and He united their hearts. Had you spent everything on earth, you would not have united their hearts, but God united them together. He is mighty and wise. O prophet, count on God, and on the believers who have followed you. O prophet, rouse the believers to battle. If there are 20 steadfast among you, they will defeat 200. And if there are a hundred of you, they will defeat a thousand of those who disbelieve, because they are a people who do not understand. God has now lightened your burden, knowing that there's weakness in you. If there are a hundred steadfast among you, they will defeat two hundred. And if there are a thousand of you, they will defeat two thousand by God's leave. God is with the steadfast. It is not for a prophet to take prisoners before he has subdued the land. You desire the materials of this world, but God desires the hereafter. God is strong and wise. Were it not for a predetermined decree from God, an awful punishment would have afflicted you for what you have taken. So consume what you have gained, legitimate and wholesome, and remain conscious of God. God is forgiving and merciful. O prophet, say to those you hold prisoners, if God finds any good in your hearts, he will give you better than what was taken from you, and he will forgive you. God is forgiving and merciful. But if they intend to betray you, they have already betrayed God, and he has overpowered them. God is knowing and wise. Those who believed and emigrated and struggled in God's cause with their possessions and their persons, and those who provided shelter and support, these are allies of one another. As for those who believed but did not emigrate, you owe them no protection until they have emigrated. But if they ask you for help in religion, you must come to their aid, except against a people with whom you have a treaty. 
God is seeing of what you do. As for those who disbelieve, they are allies of one another. Unless you do this, there will be turmoil in the land and much corruption. Those who believed and emigrated and struggled for God's cause and those who gave shelter and support, these are the true believers. They will have forgiveness and a bountiful provision. As for those who believed afterwards and emigrated and struggled with you, these belong with you. But family members are nearer to one another in the book of God. God is cognizant of everything. A declaration of immunity from God and his messenger to the polytheists with whom you had made a treaty. So travel the land for four months and know that you cannot escape God and that God will disgrace the disbelievers. And a proclamation from God and his messenger to the people on the day of the greater pilgrimage, that God has disowned the polytheists, and so did his messenger. If you repent, it will be better for you. But if you turn away, know that you cannot escape God, and announce to those who disbelieve a painful punishment except for those among the polytheists with whom you had made a treaty and did not violate any of its terms nor aided anyone against you so fulfill the treaty with them to the end of its term god loves the righteous when the sacred months have passed kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and lie in wait for them at every ambush but if they repent and perform the prayers and pay the alms, then let them go their way. God is most forgiving, most merciful. And if any one of the polytheists asks you for protection, give him protection so that he may hear the word of God. Then escort him to his place of safety. That is because they are a people who do not know. How can there be a treaty with the polytheists on the part of God and his messenger, except for those with whom you made a treaty at the sacred mosque? As long as they are upright with you, be upright with them. God loves the pious guy. How? Whenever they overcome you, they respect neither kinship nor treaty with you. They satisfy you with lip service, but their hearts refuse, and most of them are immoral. They traded away God's revelations for a cheap price, so they barred others from his path. How evil is what they did. Towards a believer, they respect neither kinship nor treaty. These are the transgressors. But if they repent and perform the prayers and give the obligatory charity, then they are your brethren in faith. We detail the revelations for a people who know but if they violate their oaths after their pledge and attack your religion, then fight the leaders of disbelief. They have no faith so that they may desist. Will you not fight a people who violated their oaths and planned to exile the messenger and initiated hostilities against you? Do you fear them? It is God you should fear if you are believers. Fight them, God will punish them at your hands and humiliate them and help you against them and heal the hearts of a believing people and he will remove the anger of their hearts. God redeems whomever he wills. God is knowledgeable and wise. Or do you think that you will be left alone without God identifying which of you will strive and take no supporters apart from God, his messenger and the believers? God is well aware of what you do. It is not for the polytheists to attend God's places of worship while professing their disbelief. These, their works are in vain, and in the fire they will abide. The only people to attend God's places of worship are those who believe in God and the last day, and pray regularly, and practice regular charity, and fear none but God. These are most likely to be guided. Do you consider giving water to pilgrims and maintaining the sacred mosque the same as believing in God and the last day and striving in God's path? They are not equal in God's sight. God 
does not guide the unjust people. Those who believe and emigrate and strive in God's path with their possessions and their persons are of a higher rank with God. These are the winners. Their Lord announces to them good news of mercy from Him and acceptance and gardens wherein they will have lasting bliss. Abiding therein forever with God is a great reward. O oh, you who believe, do not ally yourselves with your parents and your siblings if they prefer disbelief to belief. Whoever of you allies himself with them, these are the wrongdoers. Say, if your parents and your children and your siblings and your spouses and your relatives and the wealth you have acquired and a business you worry about and homes you love are more dear to you than God and his messenger and the struggle in his cause, then wait until God executes his judgment. God does not guide the sinful people. God has given you victory in numerous regions, but on the day of Hunain, your great number impressed you, but it availed you nothing, and the land, as spacious as it was, narrowed for you, and you turned your backs in retreat. Then God sent down his serenity upon his messenger and upon the believers, and he sent down troops you did not see, and he punished those who disbelieved. Such is the recompense of the disbelievers. Then, after that, God will relent towards whomever he wills. God is forgiving and merciful. O oh, you who believe, the polytheists are polluted, so let them not approach the sacred mosque after this year of theirs. And if you fear poverty, God will enrich you from his grace, if he wills. God is aware and wise. Fight those who do not believe in God, nor in the last day, nor forbid what God and his messenger have forbidden, nor abide by the religion of truth from among those who received the scripture until they pay the due tax, willingly or unwillingly. The Jews said, Ezra is the son of God, and the Christians said, the Messiah is the son of God. These are their statements. They emulate the statements of those who blessed May God assemble them how deceived they are. They have taken their rabbis and their priests as lords instead of God, as well as the Messiah, son of Mary. Although they were commanded to worship none but the one God, there is no God except He. Glory be to Him, high above what they associate with Him. They want to extinguish God's light with their mouths, but God refuses except to complete His light, even though the disbelievers dislike it. It is He who sent His messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth in order to make it prevail over all religions, even though the idolaters dislike it. O oh, you who believe, many of the rabbis and priests consume people's wealth illicitly and hinder from God's path. Those who hoard gold and silver and do not spend them in God's cause inform them of a painful punishment. On the day when they will be heated in the fire of hell, then their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be branded with them. This is what you hoarded for yourselves, so taste what you used to hoard. The number of months according to God is twelve months in the decree of God since the day he created the heavens and the earth of which four are sacred. This is the correct religion. So do not wrong yourselves during them, and fight the polytheists collectively as they fight you collectively, and know that God is with the righteous. Postponement is an increase in disbelief by which those who disbelieve are led astray. They allow it one year and forbid it another year in order to conform to the number made sacred by God. Thus permitting what God has forbidden. The evil of their deeds seems good to them. God does not guide the disbelieving people. O oh, you who believe, what's the matter with you when it is said to you, mobilize in the cause of God, you cling heavily to the earth. Do you prefer the present life to the hereafter? The enjoyment of the present life compared to the hereafter is only a little. Unless you mobilize, he will punish you most painfully and will replace you with another people. 
and you will not harm him at all. God has power over all things. If you do not help him, God has already helped him when those who disbelieved expelled him, and he was the second of two in the cave. He said to his friend, Do not worry, God is with us. And God made his tranquility descend upon him and supported him with forces you did not see, and made the word of those who disbelieved the lowest, while the word of God is the highest. God is mighty and wise. Mobilize, light or heavy, and strive with your possessions and your lives in the cause of God. That is better for you, if you only knew. Had the gain been immediate and the journey shorter, they would have followed you, but the distance seemed too long for them. Still, they swear by God, had we been able, we would have marched out with you. They damn their own souls, and God knows that they are lying. May God pardon you. Why did you give them permission before it became clear to you who are the truthful ones and who are the liars? Those who believe in God and the last day do not ask you for exemption from striving with their possessions and their lives. God is fully aware of the righteous. Only those who do not believe in God in the last day ask you for exemption. Their hearts are full of doubts, so they waver in their doubts. Had they wanted to mobilize, they would have made preparations for it, but God disliked their participation, so he held them back. And it was said, stay behind with those who stay behind. Had they mobilized with you, they would have added only to your difficulties, and they would have spread rumors in your midst, trying to sow discord among you. Some of you are avid listeners to them. God is aware of the wrongdoers. They tried to cause conflict before, and they hatched plots against you until the truth prevailed, and the command of God became evident in spite of their dislike. Among them is he who says, Excuse me, and do not trouble me. In fact, they sunk into trouble. In fact, hell will engulf the disbelievers. If something good happens to you, it upsets them. And if a calamity befalls you, they say, we took our precautions in advance, and they depart, happy. Say, nothing will happen to us except what God has ordained for us. He is our protector. In God, let the faithful put their trust. Say, are you expecting for us anything other than one of the two excellencies? As for us, we are expecting that God will afflict you with a punishment from himself or at our hands. So wait, we are waiting with you. Say, whether you spend willingly or unwillingly, it will not be accepted from you. You are evil people. What prevents the acceptance of their contributions is nothing but the fact that they disbelieved in God and his messenger, and that they do not approach the prayer except lazily, and that they do not spend except grudgingly. Let neither their possessions nor their children impress you. God intends to torment them through them in this worldly life, and that their souls depart while they are disbelievers. They swear by God that they are of you, but they are not of you. They are divisive people. Were they to find a shelter or a cave or a hideout, they would go to it, rushing. And among them are those who criticize you in regard to charities. If they are given some of it, they become pleased. But if they are not given any, they grow resentful. If only they were content with what God and his messenger have given them and said, God is sufficient for us. God will give us of his bounty and so will his messenger. To God, we eagerly turn. Charities are for the poor and the destitute and those who administer them and for reconciling hearts and for freeing slaves and for those in debt and in the path of God, and for the traveler in need, an obligation from God. God is all-knowing, most wise. And among them are those who insult the prophet and say, he is all ears, say, he listens for your own good. 
He believes in God and trusts the believers and is mercy for those of you who believe. Those who insult the messenger of God will have a painful penalty. They swear to you by God to please you, but it is more proper for them to please God and his messenger if they are believers. Do they not know that whoever opposes God and his messenger will have the fire of hell abiding in it forever? That is the supreme disgrace. The hypocrites worry lest a chapter may be revealed about them, informing them of what is in their hearts. Say, go on mocking. God will bring out what you fear. If you ask them, they will say, we were just joking and playing. Say, were you making jokes about God, his revelations and his messenger? Do not apologize. You have disbelieved after your belief. If we pardon some of you, we will punish others because they are guilty. The hypocrite men and hypocrite women are of one another. They advocate evil and prohibit righteousness and withhold their hands. They forgot God, so he forgot them. The hypocrites are the sinners. God has promised the hypocrite men and hypocrite women and the disbelievers the fire of hell, abiding therein forever. It is their due and God has cursed them. They will have a lasting punishment. Like those before you, they were more powerful than you and had more wealth and children. They enjoyed their share and you enjoyed your share as those before you enjoyed their share and you indulged as they indulged. It is they whose works will fail in this world and in the hereafter. It is they who are the losers. Have they not heard the stories of those before them, the people of Noah and Ard and Thamud, and the people of Abraham and the inhabitants of Median and the overturned cities? Their messengers came to them with the clear proofs. God never wronged them, but they used to wrong their own selves. The believing men and believing women are friends of one another. They advocate virtue, forbid evil, perform the prayers, practice charity, and obey God and his messenger. These, God will have mercy on them. God is noble and wise. God promises the believers, men and women, gardens beneath which rivers flow, abiding therein forever, and fine homes in the gardens of Eden. But approval from God is even greater. That is the supreme achievement, O oh, prophet. Strive against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be stern with them. Their abode is hell. What a miserable destination. They swear by God that they said nothing, but they did utter the word of blasphemy and they renounced faith after their submission. And they plotted what they could not attain. They were resentful only because God and his messenger have enriched them out of his grace. If they repent, it would be best for them. But if they turn away, God will afflict them with a painful punishment in this life and in the hereafter. And they will have on earth no protector and no savior. Among them are those who promised God, if he gives us of his bounty, we will donate and be among the upright. But when he has given them of his bounty, they became stingy with it and turned away in aversion. So he penalized them with hypocrisy in their hearts until the day they face him because they broke their promise to God and because they used to lie. Do they not know that God knows their secrets and their conspiracies and that God is the knower of the unseen? Those who criticize the believers who give charity voluntarily and ridicule those who find nothing to give except their own efforts, God ridicules them. They will have a painful punishment. Whether you ask forgiveness for them or do not ask forgiveness for them. Even if you ask forgiveness for them 70 times, God will not forgive them. That is because they disbelieved in God and his messenger. God does not guide the immoral people. 
Those who stayed behind rejoiced at their staying behind the messenger of God, and they hated to strive with their wealth and their lives in God's way. And they said, Do not venture out in the heat. Say, The fire of hell is much hotter if they only understood. Let them laugh a little and weep much in recompense for what they used to earn. If God brings you back to a party of them, and they ask your permission to go out, say, You will not go out with me ever, nor will you ever fight an enemy with me. You were content to sit back the first time, so sit back with those who stay behind. You are never to pray over any one of them who dies, nor are you to stand at his graveside. They rejected God and his messenger, and died while they were sinners. Do not let their possessions and their children impress you. God deceers to torment them through them in this world, and their souls expire while they are disbelievers. When a chapter is revealed stating, Believe in God and strive with his messenger, the prominent among them ask you for exemption. They say, Allow us to stay with those who stay behind. They prefer to be with those who stay behind. Their hearts were sealed, so they do not understand. But the messenger and those who believe with him struggle with their possessions and their lives. These have deserved the good things. These are the successful. God has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. That is the great victory. Some of the desert Arabs came to make excuses, asking to be granted exemption, while those who were untrue to God and his messenger stayed behind. A painful punishment will afflict those among them who disbelieved. There is no blame on the weak, nor on the sick, nor on those who have nothing to give, provided they are true to God and his messenger. In no way can the righteous be blamed. God is forgiving and merciful. Nor on those who approach you wishing to ride with you and you said, I have nothing to carry you on. So they went away, with their eyes overflowing with tears, sorrowing for not finding the means to spend. The blame is on those who ask you for exemption, although they are rich. They are content to be with those who stay behind. God has sealed their hearts so they do not know. They present excuses to you when you return to them. Say, do not offer excuses. We do not trust you. God has informed us of you, and God will watch your actions, and so will the messenger. Then you will be returned to the knower of the invisible and the visible, and he will inform you of what you used to do. They will swear to you by God when you return to them that you may leave them alone. So leave them alone. They are a disgrace, and their destiny is hell, a reward for what they used to earn. They will swear to you that you may accept them, but even if you accept them, God does not accept the wicked people. The desert Arabs are the most steeped in disbelief and hypocrisy, and the most likely to ignore the limits that God revealed to his messenger. God is knowing and wise, and among the desert Arabs are those who consider their contribution to be a fine, and they wait for a reversal of your fortunes. Upon them will fall the cycle of misfortune. God is hearing and knowing, yet among the desert Arabs are those who believe in God and the last day, and consider their contribution to be a means towards God, and the prayers of the messenger. Surely it will draw them closer, and God will admit them into his mercy. God is forgiving and compassionate. The pioneers, the first of the migrants and the supporters and those who followed them in righteousness, God is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. He has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow, where they will abide forever. That is the sublime triumph. Among the desert Arabs around you, there are some hypocrites, and among the inhabitants of Medina too. They have become adamant in hypocrisy. You do not know them. 
but we know them. We will punish them twice, then they will be returned to a severe torment. Others have confessed their sins, having mixed good deeds with bad deeds. Perhaps God will redeem them. God is forgiving and merciful. Receive contributions from their wealth to purify them and sanctify them with it, and pray for them. Your prayer is comfort for them. God is hearing and knowing. Do they not know that God accepts the repentance of his servants and that he receives the contributions and that God is the acceptor of repentance, the merciful? Say, work. God will see your work and so will his messenger and the believers. Then you will be returned to the knower of secrets and declarations and he will inform you of what you used to do. Others are held in suspense, awaiting God's decree as to whether he will punish them or accept their repentance. God is aware and wise. Then there are those who establish a mosque to cause harm and disbelief and disunity among the believers and as an outpost for those who fight God and his messenger. They will swear, our intentions are nothing but good. But God bears witness that they are liars. Do not stand in it ever. A mosque founded upon piety from the first day is worthier of your standing in it. In it are men who love to be purified. God loves those who purify themselves. Is he who founds his structure upon piety and acceptance from God better, or he who founds his structure on the brink of a cliff that is about to tumble, so it tumbles with him into the fire of hell? God does not guide the unjust people. The structure which they built will remain questionable in their hearts until their hearts are stopped. God is knowing and wise. God has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties in exchange for paradise. They fight in God's way and they kill and get killed. It is a promise binding on him in the Torah and the Gospel and the Quran. And who is more true to his promise than God? So rejoice in making such an exchange. That is the supreme triumph. Those who repent, those who worship, those who praise, those who journey, those who kneel, those who bow down, those who advocate righteousness and forbid evil, and those who keep God's limits, give good news to the believers. It is not for the prophet and those who believe to ask forgiveness for the polytheists, even if they are near relatives, after it has become clear to them that they are people of hellfire. Abraham asked forgiveness for his father only because of a promise he had made to him. But when it became clear to him that he was an enemy of God, he disowned him. Abraham was kind and clement. God would never lead a people astray after he had guided them until he makes clear to them what they should guard against. God has knowledge of all things. To God belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and he causes death. And besides God, you have neither protector nor supporter. God has redeemed the prophet and the emigrants and the supporters. Those who followed him in the hour of difficulty after the hearts of some of them almost swerved, then he pardoned them. He is kind towards them, compassionate. Also towards the three who were left behind. Then, when the earth, as vast as it is, closed in on them, and their very souls closed in on them, and they realized that there was no refuge from God except in him, he redeemed them so that they may repent. God is the Redeemer, the Merciful. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of God and be with the sincere. It is not for the inhabitants of Medina and the desert Arabs around them to stay behind the messenger of God, nor to prefer themselves to him. That is because they never suffer any thirst, nor fatigue, nor hunger in the cause of God, nor do they take one step that enrages the disbelievers, nor do they gain anything from an enemy but it is recorded to their credit as a righteous deed. God does not waste the reward of the righteous, nor do they spend any expenditure, small or large, 
nor do they cross any valley, but it is recorded to their credit that God may reward them in accordance with the best of their deeds. It is not advisable for the believers to march out altogether. Of every division that marches out, let a group remain behind to gain understanding of the religion and to notify their people when they have returned to them that they may beware. O oh, you who believe, fight those of the disbelievers who attack you and let them find severity in you and know that God is with the righteous. Whenever a chapter is revealed, some of them say, which of you has this increased in faith? As for those who believe, it increases them in faith and they rejoice. But as for those in whose hearts is sickness, it adds disgrace to their disgrace and they die as unbelievers. Do they not see that they are tested once or twice every year, yet they do not repent and they do not learn? And whenever a chapter is revealed, they look at one another. Does anyone see you? Then they slip away. God has diverted their hearts because they are a people who do not understand. There has come to you a messenger from among yourselves, concerned over your suffering, anxious over you. Towards the believers, he is compassionate and merciful. If they turn away, say, God is enough for me. There is no God except He. In Him I have put my trust. He is the Lord of the sublime throne.